podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. The show originally aired on Saturday, June 18th, 2022. This is episode 1903. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by Cisco Meraki. With employees working in different locations, providing a unified work experience seems as easy as herding cats. So how do we rein in so many moving parts? The Meraki Cloud Managed Network. Learn how your organization can make hybrid work work. Visit meraki.cisco.com slash twit. And by userway.org. Userway is the world's number one accessibility solution. And it's committed to enabling the fundamental human right of digital accessibility for everyone. When you're ready to make your site compliant, deciding which solution to use is an easy choice to make. Go to userway.org slash twit for 30% off Userway's AI-powered accessibility solution. And by Cashfly. Deliver your video on the network with the best throughput and global reach, making your content infinitely scalable. Go live in hours, not days. Learn more at cashfly.com. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. It's time, yeah, to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches. Augmented reality. Micah Sargent's here. Hello, Micah. Hello, Leo Laporte. How are you today? You brought me a toy. I did. Yes, the Steam Deck is in studio, and uh, you, you, I, you've it's shown big. great um, restraint that you're not playing it right now. I would be playing it right now if I didn't have this darn radio show to do. <laughs> um, this is a. It's kind of like a Nintendo Switch that got all swole up. <laughs> a swole switch. A swole switch, as we call it. As um, the kids are wont to say. Lots of controls. Yes, that is one of the impressive things about it. Not only does it have a lot of controls in that way, but if you're playing a game that is not made for uh, the Steam Deck, you can actually use the built-in gyroscope to move the mouse cursor oh, on that's screen. Interesting. So yeah, that's a kind of a fascinating method. It's a Linux computer. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say Linux if you don't want to, but it is. It could run Windows, but it doesn't. It runs Linux from from the folks at Steam who are kind of the preeminent uh, game store uh, on the internet. And, um, you know, it, it was announced a year ago. You yes. obviously got on the waiting list earlier than I did because I haven't got my invite, but I'm glad you got one. Yeah, so we got an invite, um, and it took a long time for the thing to ship in the first place. Um, it finally did arrive. We did an unboxing of it, and I was shocked. I'm, that's kind of what everybody's reaction has been is how big it is. Yeah, uh, It is a lot bigger than I expected. Luckily, it doesn't it doesn't weigh a whole lot, so there's not that strain that you get. Uh, but early, my see, early reviews were all very raving about how cool this was, how great this was. Well, you know, gamers want to carry this on the airplane. They want to, yeah. You know, they want to, they want their, they want to be able to game everywhere, and you don't necessarily want to bring a laptop. Right. And this I think, is for PC games, though. That's the thing that's interesting. It's not, it's not a it's console not for gamer. Being yeah, Nintendo yeah. Uh, Switch kind of games. However. Yeah. What I have discovered in actually using the thing for a bit of time, as opposed to those early reviews, is that it is a you are you're going to be giving up a lot if you want to play games like Valheim high or like games. The Witcher. Yeah. yeah, those high end, beautifully graphic heavy games do not work very well. And that is on uh, we got the mid tier model, so it has the NVMe storage, so okay. it's fast, fast storage, storage communicating. It's just that the battery life uh, it just eats up a lot of the battery life because those fans spin up, and when they spin up. You can hear it. So it's kind of what you'd expect if you put it. What is? It's an Intel processor. It is an AMD processor. AMD. Yeah. Okay. But it is what you'd expect. Custom to put a, system on a chip. Uh, X eighty six in there. I mean, that was a problem with the uh, early Xboxes too. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, the Xbox and PlayStation Five are both built for heat display position the, the xbox series x it looks like a one of those uh, uh stacks on a nuclear power plant <laughs> a cooling tower so uh again you know, i'm not surprised it's hard to put that into a small device Ex exactly you know you are you have to be aware of what you're getting right. um i think one of the cool things that I, I gave them a shout out for valve a shout out for on our review that'll be coming out i think this coming week is that they partnered with iFixit to provide replacement it's repairable of yeah. 
everything. And what's even better is going to be upgradable. So if they come out with an OLED screen for the oh. Steam, you could pop that in there and okay. be able to upgrade your screen, that kind of thing. How much? Uh, that one was 529. The uh, the smaller model that has 64 gigs of space, I honestly don't remember the price there, but I don't recommend that no, one. No. Uh, you want as much as your budget, if you're going to get this- What was the top the of the line one? 512 gigabytes. And I also- How much was it? Price, like 650? You know? yeah, yeah, something like that. Get the Why biggest didn't you one get you the possibly- high end one? Because I had done, so I was planning I'm on- paying for it. I you know, can buy the big one. <laughs> in, the, in the original uh, idea, I was going to buy it and myself. And so ah. I wanted to get the mid tier one. That's what I did my res reservation. Oh, so for. the reservation, it, this is what you tied, had the reservation Yeah, for. exactly. Okay. It's tied to the storage size you get. So I had to go with this one anyway. And, um, what See, I, I think a lot of hardcore gamers think the Nintendo switch, which is more portable mm -hmm. and it's actually pretty usable is maybe not a serious gaming machine. Although I have to say the people who love it, they love really it. really love it. Yeah, so it's $399 for the 64 gig, but that uses eMMC storage. $529 for that one that we have, the 256, and $649 for yeah. the 512. Yeah. Well, you know, kids, uh, if, you're, if you're a hardcore gamer, it might be worth sacrificing some frame rate and battery life. To be able to have it portable. Yeah. Take it on the plane with you, which I'm going to be doing in about a week so sorry i do wonder if it's gonna, <laughs> you're not seeing it again <laughs> i do wonder if it's going to displace the air in the plane uh, you know what i bought for the trip we should talk about this with johnny jet a carbon dioxide monitor because that's a pretty good proxy for how good the ventilation is in other words how good how safe you are from covid19 so many people are getting covid the planes they say are very well ventilated but i've seen a lot of people including friends of mine uh tweet Hey, you know, the CO2 level is 1,700 in here. Isn't it supposed to be better? So I am thinking maybe uh, the planes aren't as well ventilated as they've been saying. So I thought, well, I'm going to do a test. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be flying uh, a couple of airlines in the next month. Uh, we're going to go back to Rhode Island on JetBlue and then uh, to visit my mom, my daughter, and I. And then uh, next month, we're going to Alaska for that cruise you're going to be taking over. Uh, that'll be on Alaska Air. So I'll give you some... Um, yeah, I am curious to hear about I'll that. I'll give you some uh, res res reports. But boy, uh, I thought that was uh, kind of surprising. You know, one other thing about this... <laughs> I wonder if I'm going to get stopped at the, at, the, at the TSA with this and a, a carbon dioxide monitor. They're going to really think I'm up to some <laughs> something no good. Yeah, hey, what's that guy doing? What is that? Oh, you know, that's a good point. Redacted in a chat room. So you just crack a window for ventilation oh, and right. get some air in there. I always forget about yeah, that. Yeah, I always forget about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this charges with a Type-C charger. Mm -hmm. The United States Senate is now calling oh, wow. after the Senate EU though. has announced that they're going to require Type-C charging on all phones, which really, the only phone that I know of that doesn't use Type-C charging, any modern phone, is the uh, Apple uh, iPhone. Mm -hmm. The trio of Democratic senators, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Ed Markey, troublemakers <laughs> to the <All> of them. <laughs> to the root, sent a letter to uh, Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo saying, we should do the same thing. The EU says 11,000 tons of e-waste a year will be eliminated if everybody just uses the same charger. So you don't have to get a new charger every time you get a new device. That's a good point. Uh, I just think it's convenient. I'm sure Apple's not thrilled because, you know, Apple makes money on the lightning charger. So whenever somebody makes a lightning cable, they pay Apple around $4 per cable. Mm -hmm. It's it's estimated. Apple's not saying, but that's the estimate, 3 to $4 per cable. And so, no, of course, Apple doesn't want to, you know, abandon their money-making lightning cable. But so I'm curious, actually, what our audience thinks. If you use an iPhone, <clears throat> should the next iPhone have a Type-C charger you already probably are using one as i am on your laptop if it's a modern laptop they don't have proprietary chargers anymore if you have an android phone you're probably using type c which and will... many people are using a USB C to lightning cable in the first place right. so even with their iphone the other side's USB C. why aren't you USB C? And i don't think there's anything lightning can do that uh, a USB C. not at can't. this point exactly right. yeah we it's 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 all the same uh in actually fact, in fact USB C might be able to do more apple's putting USB C on their ipads now yep uh, they put it on their laptops too, so I don't know. It'd be it's interesting, very interesting. Elon Mes Musk, Elon Musk, Elon Musk met with Twitter this past week. 
What a jerk.、Mm. I'm just going to say this. So he's meeting with, he's, remember, he's buying Twitter, wants to buy Twitter, is trying to buy Twitter, probably will buy Twitter. So they had a virtual town hall on Thursday to meet with Elon, which he joined on his cell phone. Are you serious? <laughs> like, you know, he's holding the phone. Yeah, hey guys, how's everybody? And、uh, talked for 90 minutes answering、uh, questions, actually, an hour, an hour a whole hour,、uh, answering questions about remote work. He said, Well, if you're an excellent employee, I guess so. Remember that he told his Tesla and SpaceX employees, You better be coming back into the factory or else.、Uh, whether he'd be laying people off, yes, probably.、Uh, what would happen with content moderation?、Um, Time and again, Casey Newton writes, he offered workers hungry for concrete answers a jumble of sentence fragments.、Mm. The Bloomberg Live blogged it, the New York Times Live blogged it, as if it's like some huge event. And of course, it was, I'm sure, a private company event, but you know, 8,000 employees, some of them are going to leak it.、Um, so, what sort of content moderation、uh, will、uh, Twitter have in the Musk era? We should allow people to say what they want. But it's important to make Twitter as attractive as possible. He says he wants a billion users. A billion users, which is about 770 million more users than it has today. So good luck, Elon. Good luck.、Um, if I were、uh, working at Twitter, I might be, I might be, having, I might be putting my resume up、yep. on, the, uh, on the old LinkedIn.、Uh, we'll see what happens. I think it was a little disrespectful. He could have sat down at a computer with a good screen and a you know, good microphone. It's, and, it's all, you know, it's all, that that was not、uh, done on n o t I'm a busy man.、Yeah. I can't be bothered to take this time. It's important. I've work to do.、Or、I've even, got engineers at Tesla to bother. He could just think it's funny. Like it's even as simple as that.、Yeah. And that's what is so annoying about him and the fact People, that he has so much power. <laughs> when, I, when I criticize、uh, Elon, or I get、oh, an email、boy. from、uh, Elon fans. Stands, they call stands, them. Stands, they are stands. Uh, uh, who say, well, you give him some respect for all the accomplishments he has made. And it's true, we wouldn't have probably as many electric vehicle choices uh, uh, if it weren't for Tesla. SpaceX has shown what you can do economically. A lot of credit to Tesla Engineers, a company、mm -hmm. he bought, who、uh, I think have worked despite Elon to make a good product, and to SpaceX Engineers, who Poor guys have to sit there while Elon comes in and weighs in on nozzle temperatures, even though he's not an engineer.、Uh, I don't know. Yeah, some great accomplishments from those two companies. And I'll, gi I'll give Elon credit. He bought them and made, and made no, them. Leo, don't you know he actually is the one person who builds every <laughs> he's, single day? He's the、Tesla. genius. People、yeah. really, there's a, there is, in, especially in Silicon Valley, but every, you know, in general in humans, this great man theory、yeah. that a Napoleon. Uh, or an Alexander the Great, or you know, these great men come along, or the Henry Fords, or the Thomas Edisons. It's my、uh, contention that if Thomas Edison and Henry Ford had had Twitter, we would know that they were not great men. <laughs> they were just human beings、yes. at the right place at the right, right time. time.、Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Maybe a little courage. Courage, I'll give him courage. He's、yes. got courage, he's brave. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, so I'll give him credit, but at the same time, You've got to look at it, the Elon of today, and it's hard to give him credit for anything but being a superb troll. He's very one of the good best. At that.、Yes. He's one of the best.、Yep. Let's give him credit. Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent, your tech guys. We're going to the phones in just a little bit. Stay here. Office has a new look. Did I get it in? Bravo, sir. Bravo. Bravo. Very impressive. Office has a new look. Welcome to the newly refreshed office. No, I have, a, I have an ad to read. No, we think it'll help you focus more on your work. No, no, I am <laughs> trying to do my work right now. No, no, this is only one of four. <clears throat> Go away, office. I don't need to know about your new look. I don't care about your new look. Oh, and they're not even there yet. It's coming soon. So this is an ad. Yeah, that's bad. Oh, yeah, this is the ads that.、Uh, um, here, let me show you. These are the ads that、um, it's already on input to. Paul t h e r a t t was talking about in Windows, where I'm already, I'm, pay, I'm a pay in office customer. See right at the top here? Take Office Anywhere. View, edit, and share on the go with family and friends using Office Mobile App. Get started. No. Why is it in all c a p Why? Come on. Don't, I don't want that in my、uh, copy. Oh, coming soon. Look at this whole、oh、bar、God. here. The whole sidebar? Get rid of it. I don't want that in my copy. Go away. 
Oh, Microsoft. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the gentlewoman who answers your phone. <laughs> Don't need an operator anymore. Kim Schaffer. Just hit one button. Can you, when you answer the phone, can you go, one ringy dingy? <laughs> I can. No. I don't know if anybody wants to hear yeah. that. <laughs> Hello? Is this the party to whom I am speaking? <laughs> Kim Sheffer is so wonderful. She does it all. And, uh, and answer, well, she doesn't, all. she doesn't do it all. <laughs> but she does much of it. Answering your calls, getting you on the air. Hello, Kim. Hello. How's your week been? I, I feel like it's been really good, but you know, when it's funny when you ask me that, I have no idea what I know. I've done all that. It, it's just a blur. <laughs> I feel like it's, it's been fun. It's been a long week. It's been a long has it been long for you? Yeah. It actually just happened to be long right at the end. It wasn't so long at the beginning, but <laughs> I feel like my week has been excellent. Good. Yeah. But I don't have any reason to think that. I don't even remember it. <laughs> you know, I think maybe the more fun you have, the less you remember it. Is that possible? It, our brains well, are it trained. Depends on what kind really, of fun you had. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Fix it on the bad, so that is not surprising. Kim, who should I? Let's well, drop this conversation now. Who should all I the talk callers to? have been very funny this morning. Oh, okay. good. <clears throat> I like George in Hudson, Florida, because you're going to help him with hearing aids, or his wife is threatening to kick him out. Oh, <laughs> you know that's what happened to me. Thank you, Kim. Hello, George, Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent, your tech guys. Micah's too young to actually know anything about hearing aids, but uh, we'll see You'll what we can do. You'll learn soon enough, believe me. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to the show. Leo, my, my wife's going to throw me out if I don't get a hearing aid, and I say to her, huh? <laughs> Do you get so this? I, 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 do you get this where you go where you say, why are, why are you guys all mumbling so much these days? Kids today, they just oh, mumble. I, I, I go with my wife to her uncle's place and, and it's down south of us, and uh, they they claim all over my case because they can't hear a thing they're saying. Well, I Which can is, hear it, but I don't know what the hell they're saying. Here's the it's, beauty. It's mumbled up somehow. Yeah, here's the beauty of uh, hearing aids. You can turn them off. <laughs> 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 so you're picking, this is a good time to get a hearing aid. You know, when I uh, bought mine, uh, I had to go to an audiologist who uh, then gave me a hearing test, and then uh, I had to pay $6,000 uh, out of pocket uh, for hearing aids. Uh, I got mine from Starkey. Now I have a pair of Resounds because I just wanted to try around. But, but the good news is over-the-counter hearing aids are finally happening. The FDA has been dragging their feet. In 2017... Congress mandated over-the-counter hearing aids. In other words, in fact, the, it was called the Over-the-Counter Hearing Aid Act. In other words, that you wouldn't have to go to an audi audiologist, that you could, in fact, buy hearing aids uh, over-the-counter, like at a drugstore. Now, it's not, <laughs> it's not quite uh, done yet, Um there's, you know, the audiologists and the hearing aid manufacturers aren't really happy. But there are companies like Oticon, and I also should add Apple and Samsung and others who are really thinking, what can we do if we could sell hearing aids over the counter for a lot less? What could we do? Oticon is a Danish company that's been around for a while doing real hearing aids, you know, i.e. expensive uh, for a long time, but they are starting to look at, uh, you know, hear, sub $1,000 hearing aids. Uh, and I think there are other companies uh, starting to do this. At this point, though, unless your wife can develop some patience, <laughs> it might be that you still have to go. How long have you been married, Leo? Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it might it might have to be uh, that you go now to an audiologist. Um the I think this is about to explode, but it's still early days yet. So, you know, if you can get your insurance to cover it, <laughs> highly recommended. They're very expensive, but they do work, and that's the beauty of it. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Um, let me just stay on the line because I I haven't I didn't really get to finish <laughs> this conversation. Um, the, let me see what the latest date of this is. Um, can you believe it was five years ago that this became the law? But 
Yeah, I'm not seeing a whole lot of options. Yeah, uh, as of as of last month, the FDA has yet to publish. Thank you, FDA, for kowtowing to you know the hearing aid manufacturers and the audiologists. Big ear, we call them. <laughs> yeah. Once the FDA regulations are published, then it should happen quickly. Uh, there are quite a few companies. Um, Autocus, Bose, Eargo is the one I'm familiar with. Jabra, you may remember them from Bluetooth headsets. Lexi and Lively are all, you know, working really hard to make hearing aids. You might look at the Eargos. They're about half as much as, uh, as you know, Starkeys and Resounds. And they, you, you don't need to go to an audiologist. You can, they sell direct to consumers. They're still expensive. Actually, they're not half as much because they're, they, oh, this is so annoying. The pricing is for one. Oh. <laughs> $2,000 for one. So they're a little less expensive. Uh, they, of course, don't sell them one at a time. So that's really kind of, eh, maybe not. But they, they are one of the companies. They sell them in pairs. Yeah. They only sell them in pairs. So why they give you the price for one is beyond me. <laughs> um, one, I went to a, I went to my insurance company and they told me who I should see. And I have to go. I got an appointment for an audiologist. Good. The 1st of July. And there's one morning and what, so, what I'm stepping into here. Here's what an audiologist will do. Uh, you know, they'll give you a test, just in a little room, and you, you've probably done this before. I did it in grade school, where you raise your hand, left hand, if you hear in your left ear, and that kind of thing. They'll do that, and then they'll create a graph of where your hearing is deficit, you know, deficits are. And then when they, when you get hearing aids like the Stark, the traditional hearing aids like Starkeys or uh, Resounds, they will then match that curve. Here's the first thing I learned, though, that was really disappointing to me. I thought I'd hear better. Hearing aids do not make you hear better. Hearing aids make voices more audible, more clear. They only amplify in the voice range. And so the first thing you notice, it takes it actually takes a while to get used to hearing aids. First thing you notice is there's a lot of, you know, as we age, we lose our high end. There's a lot of high end sound that uh, actually should bring Scott in because Scott probably knows a little bit about this. There's you lose your high end hearing uh, first, and so there's a lot of high end sounds all of a sudden, like clothes rustling and my feet on the carpet that I hadn't heard in years. That all of a sudden it's really freaking loud. And carbonation in in coke. And stuff. Yeah. Yep. Do you wear hearing aids, Scott? Uh, I have them. I yeah. wear them occasionally. Yeah, me too. I have them. I don't. They're a little annoying, and I hear well enough that I, I don't yet yeah, feel like I have exactly. to wear them all the time. You're you exactly should not, right. not wear them, by the way, once you get them. Uh, in fact, there's evidence that you, there's cognitive decline goes along with hearing loss. Be yes. Uh, because you kind of dial out, and I don't know if you're experiencing this, George, but you know when you can't hear stuff, you kind of dial out, and apparently that's related to, you know, separating from the world. <laughs> I think that's what my wife's problem is. She thinks I'm dialing her out. Yeah, but you're not. So. Yeah. So I was hoping for something that would give... In fact, we should talk about this with Scott because it is it is germane to uh, hearing. Ergo makes a hi-fi hearing aid that's, that's, of course, more expensive that's designed to give you better full-range hearing, which is an interesting idea, I think. Anyway, we're going to do Skype. Keep listening, George. Or do you have other sure questions? Will. Yeah. Does that give you some idea of what to expect? Mostly expect to write a big check. <laughs> yeah. yeah, really. And surprise me is that it's, I can't hear most everything of just the voice, you know. It didn't, yeah. It improves That's the voice. No, it doesn't improve anything else. That's the... That's a bummer. It's time for home theater guru, Mr. Geek himself, Scott Wilkinson. <laughs> when it comes to flat screens and surround sound, no one has better ears. YouTube.com slash AVS Forum for his podcast. And, of course, he joins us every week. Hi, Scott. You hey, are like Leo. me. You own hearing aids, but rarely wear them. Well, I wouldn't say rarely, but, yeah, I, I wear them when... My wife and I are together, and I need to understand what she's saying right. more clearly. Did it surprise you when you got them? We were talking to George, who wanted to know a little bit about what to expect, that it doesn't make your hearing better? Uh, no, that didn't surprise me. You uh, knew that ahead it, of time? 
I did. And I did not. I, I, I was shocked. I thought, oh, great, music's going to sound so much better because I'm going to hear it all. They don't amplify anything except the human voice, basically. Well, that's what they're designed to do, right. It's What you mentioned is what's called intelligibility. Mm. If you can, you can understand voices better, and voice intelligibility really rides in the in the uh, three to six k range. That's not which much. Is where, which is where the consonants are. Yeah. And consonants are what give speech most of its intelligibility. Three thousand to six thousand hertz, and our hearing ranges, if it's perfect, from twenty hertz to twenty thousand hertz. So correct. Three to six thousand is a very narrow range of that. It's a pretty narrow range. And interestingly, my last hearing test. Uh, that I took at the audiologist had a dip in that range, but it came back up. I could actually discern 20K. Yeah. I was amazed at that. That's actually, unusual for old that's folks like that. Very unusual. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You exactly lose that right. when you're about 30. That starts to exactly. go. Exactly. Especially yeah. if you go to loud concerts. Yeah. yeah. And or as, as a musician, I've played a lot of loud concerts. Well, I think you and I have occupational hearing loss too. I mean, we, we also, probably went to hearing aids sooner because you're a musician. And right. as a as a longtime radio guy wearing headphones all day every day, it probably yep. is too loud. Yep. You know, it's a vicious cycle because a uh, circle yeah. because you you turn them up and it sounds better, and then you turn up some more because you're losing yep. your hearing, and you turn up some yep. more, and you're actually yep. slowly ruining your hearing. Oh man! And and I've heard stories of mixing engineers in concerts who are losing their hearing because the concerts are very loud, and they keep cranking up the. Yep the three to six K range because they can't hear it. And that's damaging the audience quicker. Right. And I think that's even in high school, I used to like to sit next to the speakers at rock concerts. <laughs> oh, very man. bad idea. Uh, oh. The other thing I have, and a lot of us have about it, I think about a third of uh, Americans have is something called tinnitus or tinnitus where you get yes. a ringing in your ears Yep. and uh, nothing a hearing aid can do about that. Nothing. No. Absolutely nothing. No. There's nothing anybody can do about it. There's Not that no we know cure. of. There is. Yeah. There's a German company that has. They put electrodes on your tongue. You have to stick out your tongue, and then they come on your ear, and then they do, <laughs> and they do some things. And they they, they claim it, it can uh, remediate or even cure tinnitus, but we'll, well see. It, Not approved we'll see. for use by the Federal Drug Administration. I'd I'd be interested to learn more about that. I hadn't heard that one. I've heard of some tr programs that basically train you to ignore it. Yeah. Which yeah. is about the best you can do. Well, I can ignore it. I'm ignoring it right I now. I can too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like my wife, I, I can tune it out. <laughs> 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 Oops. Did I say that out loud? So, uh, uh, no, I don't do that. So It doesn't uh, prevent me from sleeping, but but people with really bad tinnitus oh, yeah. can't sleep. Oh, yeah. It's very loud when it's quiet. Uh, yeah, It's exactly. harder to ignore when it's quiet. So. Yeah. Uh, I hope someday we'll have a cure for that. And I hope someday over-the-counter really hearing aids will finally be approved by the FDA. You know, I I'm I, I do too because they're very expensive and they're not covered by insurance, as you mentioned before. Well, Medicare might. I mean, you should check. I shouldn't no, say that. No, they don't. They oh. don't. Believe me, I know. They okay. don't. <laughs> it's out uh, of pocket, man. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that's super ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Well, it's because they're uh, so expensive. However, I, I have to say that there is value in going to an audiologist and getting a real hearing test. I agree. The uh, These over-the-counter, I didn't get around to saying it, but these over-the-counter hearing aids have all sorts of ways of doing it uh, without an audiologist. Yeah, an app on your phone yeah. and stuff like that, but it's it's not accurate. Right. Um, I will tell you also, you, you mentioned uh, f um, full range or, or audiophile... Uh, hearing aids, uh, Widex, a company called Widex, W-I-D-E-X, out of Denmark, uh, makes some audiophile hearing aids. Oh, I'd like to try which, those out. That's which are the ones I got. Yeah. And do they, they sound? as much. Yeah, they sound really good. So the, so your bass is better. So that we lose, we tend to lose at the edges, right? I, the high end and the well, low correct. end. Yeah. Well, correct. We well, we don't really lose typically at the low end, only at the high end. High end, end. okay. Um, and... And and they do sound excellent. That's why uh, everybody needs opinion. to do a test because it, everybody's exactly. curves and is different. Exactly, exactly. And so an audiologist can do that in a an isolated room, as you mentioned. You go into a room, they close a door. It's really well insulated, and they play you different tones. And you, in my case, there was a clicker that I didn't have to raise my hand. It was just a clicker that I. When you hear this tone, click the button. 
sort of like the Jeopardy signaler. And so I did that. And then at the end, you come out and she shows you, uh, she or he, shows you, uh, you know, your curve of, of what your response is. And typically, you have a deficit in the 3 to 6K range, which is right where speech is, yeah. which is ironic that that speech intelligibility because that's what goes first. Right. There, and I will say, and that's probably a reason for that, but um, uh, let's not get philosophical. Uh, no, not. Okay. I will I will say that the other reason you want an audiologist is because you can, will continue to visit them for yes. updates and tuning. And in fact, especially Correct. when you first get it, Yes, you really do want to make a couple of trips back to to, to, to get it just just so, right? Yep, yep, yeah. that's exactly correct. Yeah. Exactly correct. Yeah. So it's worth it's worth going to an audiologist, in my opinion. I see advertisements on TV commercials for Eargo and some of these other companies. Well, and, and that's the whole thing. OTC is no audiologist. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I just looked it up, and uh, Zvox, which makes some really nice sound bars and and stuff like that also makes hearing aids. I suspect uh, so. that that's one of the things that will happen with OTC because they've got to find a reason, you know, you might want to get this. And I think high fidelity is going to be one of the reasons people want. Yes. Uh, and then the other is going to be aesthetics. And then finally, I think it's going to be uh, particularly going to be, uh, you know, quantified self. It's going to be health related things like blood you know the hearing aid in your ear can actually do things like see your blood pressure and yeah. uh, and the heart rate and so well, I don't I think know that it can, it can certainly see your heart rate I'm not sure it can see there your are blood claims pressure. that it can see your health well yeah, yeah. okay, okay. Right. <laughs> but uh, and, and or it could Sennheiser's be in a, another but, company that is the looking that is going in this direction and they're great audiologists yeah. oh I mean great. Uh, I mean audio, audio file company company yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so uh Audacus, Bose, Ergo, Jabra, Lexi, and Livey, Lively are all uh, companies that say we're going to get into this over-the-counter hearing aid space. Mm. Uh, but it's not there yet. And it's, you know, by the way, Lively uh, also makes bras and undies. No, I think that's a different Lively. <laughs> <laughs> there's Wear Lively, which is bras and undies. And then there's just Bow. Lively, which is uh, Jitterbug. <laughs> they make the Jitterbug phone, but they also plan to make right. uh, OTC hearing aids. <laughs> well, well, you I'm, know, I'm, I'm following this. Yeah, it's uh, it's foundational, right? It's uh, it, well, we're all going to get there uh, with any luck, are. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think it's important to uh, to know what the pros and cons are. Besides expense, I would, I really would love a full, uh, proved full range. Uh, well, the Widex, the Widex moment is is what it's called. Widex moment, okay, and those yeah. were six thousand dollars, probably. Mm -hmm. Yep, they were. <sighs> <sighs> Thank you, home theater. See, this counts. This is this is audio counts, and I know you you, you know you care a lot about audio and, uh, and this hearing. is part of it and hearing. Yeah, uh, youtubecom slash forum. That's where Scott Wilkinson uh, lives and 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 speaks regularly about these kinds of things. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number. Scott's going to hang around for our podcast listeners and uh, keep talking, but Mike and I will be back to answer you your calls right after this. Oh, I've got to flip a switch here. Flip that switch. Flip switch. I've got a new technique. Oh, what's that? I've got a, a HDMI switcher, but it's not taking. Oh, which HDMI switcher do you have? This is uh, from Monoprice, three by one mini HDMI switch. Mm hmm. I've been playing with those lately. Huh. Uh, and I've, I've, I've been having some trouble with them and switching between a cable box and streamer. Hmm. I was going to talk about it when I had a good solution. Which well, I don't yet. Apparently, we don't have one either. <laughs> <laughs> you think that'll do it? That'll do. <laughs> okay. uh, by the way, R Ralph Ralph got in the chat room it says I've been told that Costco is good for hearing aids too. That is correct. In fact, my doctor, my regular doctor, uh, when I was talking to him about it. Uh, said, oh, yeah, go to Costco. The only problem that's is you have to buy six at a time, and that's the only <laughs> <laughs> No, no. 
Um, <clears throat> you know, but if you want anything specialized, like these Widex moments or or something like that, uh, Costco doesn't carry those. They carry Resounds. Yeah, I like my Resounds. Those are good. Uh -huh. they're, they're rechargeable, so that's nice. Yeah, yeah. So are mine. And um, the the Widex I had previous to these, actually, you could either use rechargeable batteries or non-rechargeable regular hearing aid batteries. So if you weren't near a charging outlet, you could still get by, which I thought was great. The the, the moments don't do that. It's only rechargeable. <laughs> <clears throat> Martin in Germany asked, did I prepare for this topic? Was it planned? No, no. obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I had something completely else in mind, but that's fine. I'll save it to next week. No big deal. Uh, listener, listener question. I do want to say, and I hope, uh, I, I was hoping to say this on the air, but uh, we just did a, our latest podcast, which was an interview with Paul Barton, founder and chief speaker designer of PSB Speakers. Great, great speakers who are set, the company is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. So we had a lot of fun on that on that show. So go to youtube.com slash AVS forum and check it out. It's a, it was a great conversation. Had a great time. Um, let's see. Beatmasters asking, what do hearing aids actually do? Raise the level of the frequencies that are impacted or is some, another trick with equalization? Well, that's equalization is the same thing. It's raising frequencies at a, a certain frequencies. Um, how do they prevent distortion at certain levels? They don't. They it, You have to get pretty loud, but if you get loud enough, they distort, no question, big time. Um, and they do raise the level of the frequencies that are impacted. That's exactly correct. Um, so the audiologist takes a look at your hearing profile and then makes essentially an inverse profile for the hearing aid so that the frequencies that you don't hear very well, they amplify to bring them up to where they should be if you didn't need them, so to speak. If that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Yes, uh, Martin in Germany, we all get there. That is true. I was, as I say, I was astonished that I could actually hear 20K. And that's another thing to, be, to point out that I'll tell you later. Thank you. The Tech Guy Show brought to you today, brand new sponsor for us by Cisco Meraki. You've heard me talk about Meraki. Uh, really cool company. Cisco acquired them not so long ago. They are now the experts in cloud-based networking for hybrid work. Whether your employees are working at home, at a cabin in the mountains, I wish, or in a lounge chair at the beach, all right, a cloud-managed network provides the same exceptional work, this is key, right, the same exceptional work experience. Even in Barbados, baby, you may as well roll out the welcome app because hybrid work is here to stay. Nothing we can do about that. Hybrid work works best in the cloud. And actually has some perks for both employees and leaders. This is important. Workers can move faster, deliver better results. They're going to be happier, too. With a cloud-managed network, they can do everything on the beach that they could do at the office. And as for leaders, it really helps because you can automate distributed operations. You can build more sustainable workspaces. You can proactively protect the network. The IDG Market Pulse uh, research report just came out, conducted for Meraki, and it highlights... The top tier opportunities in supporting hybrid work. I really want to encourage you to consider this. It's hard. I know. I'm a boss. I want everybody to come in. But there are some real benefits. Hybrid work is a priority for 78% of C-suite executives. I think they see the writing on the wall. Leaders want to drive collaboration forward. But, of course, you want to stay on top of boosting productivity. And you've got to stay on top of security. Hybrid work certainly has its challenges. We know that. The IDG report raises the red flag, of course, about security, noting that 48% of leaders report cybersecurity threats as a primary obstacle to improving workforce experiences. Always on security monitoring, part of what makes the cloud-managed network so awesome. 
you're using it, you're protected. IT can use apps from Meraki's vast ecosystem of partners, turnkey solutions built to work seamlessly with the Meraki cloud platform for asset tracking, for location analytics, and more. You can gather insights on how people use their workspaces. In a smart space, environmental sensors can track activity and occupancy levels to stay on top of cleanliness. Still have to do that. Reserve workspaces based on vacancy and employee profiles. It's hot desking. You've heard that term, I think, which means employees can scout out a spot and a snap, settle in, and, and get they're getting all the work done safely, securely, no matter where they are. You can book with Meraki locations in restricted environments in advance. You can include time-based door access. Physical security is important too, right? Uh, of course, MDM, mobile device management, means you can integrate devices and systems, allowing IT to manage, update, and troubleshoot company-owned devices, even if the device and the employee are in a remote location. The whole idea here is to turn any space into a place of productivity, securely, safely, effectively. Empower your organization with the same exceptional experience, no matter where they work. Do it with Meraki and the Cisco suite of technology. Learn how your organization can make hybrid work work. Visit meraki.cisco.com slash twit. M-E-R-A-K-I, meraki.cisco.com slash twit. We thank them so much for supporting the Tech Guy Show. And you support us too, by the way, when you use that address. So that way they know, oh, they actually heard our ad. Meraki.cisco. Dot com slash twit. Thank you, Meraki. Now, back to the tech guy. Professor Laura coming through. Did you ask for this? Yeah, this is the Postal Service. I feel like we're in My space. My favorite band. Sputnik's talking to us. Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent, your tech guys, 8888. Ask Leo George. I'm sorry, Ed is on the line from uh, Claremore, Oklahoma. Hello, Ed. Oh, Uncle Leo. Uncle Ed, or I guess I should say nephew Ed. <laughs> Hello, Ed. <laughs> I was tempted to use my Jerry Seinfeld voice, but never mind that. Hello, Leo. Let me hear your Jerry yeah, Seinfeld. Leo. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, uh, I have two issues. Hopefully, maybe we can hit them both. But the first one mainly, I just, I've had Starlink for about a year, and I oh, really love it. tell me about it. Now, Starlink went up uh, a little bit. Oh, yeah. Did you mind that? Well... Compared to what I just got, it really doesn't matter. Oh. Uh, what what so did you guess get? What happened? One of the cellular companies put 5G in my area. Mm -hmm. Which so one? Said, uh, T Mobile. And they offer a residential uh, 5G based right. internet service, right. as does Verizon. Yeah. I got the Verizon for my daughter because she was. I also noted when I visited her. Oh, wow, you get really you get ultra ultra wideband five G, which is that mid band, very fast. And I said, I bet you this would work perfectly for you, and it does. It's one hundred fifty megabits uh, down, and it's uh, thirty or forty up. It's really good. What are you getting? Oh well, I thought really really good. This relates to my second question, not the first question, but okay. the second question has to do with speeds. I, it started off showing well over 300. Wow. Um, Starlink started off showing 70 some, and then other times I'd get 150 or so. So I was real happy with that. But the last couple of weeks, it has gone down, 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 both of them. And I just did a test. I have four devices that I tested, two iPads, an iPhone, and an iMac. My Mac is slow on its own, let alone the Internet. So I don't know if that's a problem with that device. It's in a different room also. But I tried all th four devices except the Mac in two rooms, one close to the routers and one another room over. And I'm getting 12, 20. I got, I got a five today on one of the devices. Five megabits down? Yeah. And oh, I that's not 10 good. Down, a 10 down on one of them and a 23 up. Now, that I don't understand. So, yeah. Well, I, I do, uh, unfortunately. Um, the first thing to know, I don't know if your T-Mobile does this. The Verizon has an Ethernet connection on it. So the first thing you'd want to do is let's eliminate the Wi-Fi issue. They may not have a great Wi-Fi radio. Your devices may not. Wi-Fi is always slower than hardwired. So if mm -hmm. your T-Mobile base station has an Ethernet connection, does not uh, yes. Yes. I would get. I would try connecting it directly to some device. Obviously, not your phones. 
It's going to probably have to be your laptop and see what that looks like to make sure that it's not a Wi-Fi issue. Wi-Fi can get can deteriorate because of congestion, because of right. Wi-Fi. Uh, you're in a rural area, I'm thinking, yeah. I can try that with my iMac, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Plug it in your iMac. In fact, that's exactly what I did with my daughter. I hardwired her iMac and let her use Wi-Fi uh, everywhere else. And that's kind of what you want. Um, so if it's still that slow, then the problem is not Wi-Fi. The problem is probably T-Mobile, and I think it's probably the fact that your neighbors have now signed up for this as well. Well, I hope. I hope Do you have a? Your, how rural is Claremont? Claremore. Oh well, I'm out in the country. Yeah, we got. You know, there might be three of us on the service right. Well, that wouldn't be bad. Remember that the cell tower is going to be within a mile or so of you, so it's going to be everybody within that say. Yeah. square mile. Okay. Well, I don't know how many around the surrounding neighborhoods. We don't really have neighborhoods, but we have little spots. With right. Several houses in them. And uh, that, that could be an issue. I did notice that after I tried three or four times today and I got these lousy numbers, then the last time I tried, I think it was on T-Mobile, I got, well, I tried both and they were, uh, all of my devices were up in the hundred plus. Oh, see, so that would imply congestion, not a problem in to, in your house, but congestion. Yeah. And oh. and that was one of my concerns with my daughter, because uh, a lot of times these uh, 5G towers are near highways. They want to put them where there's going to be the most possible usage. Right. Are, is there a highway going through there? Not really. Okay. Uh, so they just... Uh, state, a state highway, no but, interstate. Okay, but they put it out there for some reason, uh, maybe just because they wanted those three people to be very happy. <laughs> Um, I was for a while. <laughs> uh, it's really going to depend on congestion. So uh, with my daughter, because it's near a highway, I tried it during rush hours as well. And actually Verizon was fairly consistent, which means that they put enough bandwidth into that head end, that cell tower, to I handle the, even the worst case scenario. T-Mobile, given especially that you're in a rural area, may not have done that. You know, they have to, right. run, they have to run fiber out to, to that cell tower so that it has enough bandwidth. I hope they can keep keep get the performance up and keep it up because we'd like to shut off our satellite uh, TV service and go to a streaming service. Wouldn't that be great if you could if you could a lot even money. if it was just a consistent hundred megabits, that would be certainly doable. And uh, yeah. but a consistency and of course, when's it most congested? Right when you sit down to watch Netflix, well, like well, everybody well, else. Yeah. <laughs> so I noticed that at the start of the uh, uh, pandemic. Was, yeah, I was okay at night. I, with, at that time, I had Viasat satellite, which was not good to begin with, and I was getting down, you know, um, telephone modem speeds at, in the evening when yeah. everybody came home to watch a movie. Yeah, it was terrible. Well, was worse. I, this is interesting. Um, I don't have any experience with the T-Mobile residential service. I do with Verizon. I was very impressed with the Verizon, but I think. Actually, just like Starlink, there's going to be wide variations in speed. And I think it's also going to very much depend on you and where you are and which tower you're on and who else is using it and blah, blah, blah. So you can't say, uh, oh, well, this is going to be great everywhere. It's just really going to, you know, that's why it's probably good to take advantage of the trial period to see if it works for you. And then try it all times of day and night and see. That's very disappointing. Five megabits is ridiculous. Oh, the yeah, fact well, that it was higher yeah. upstream than uh, and then lower downstream tells me it is a, a congestion issue with their tower. Ah, uh -huh. So okay. it's very tower related. I would call them and say, "Look, you got to improve this service, or I'm not going to keep it." And no, none of your none of your neighbors will, and that will give them an incentive, perhaps, to improve the uh, con connectivity of the well, tower. That, that brings up an issue that the reason, my first reason for the call was my neighbor who got it before I did said, asked me if I had a problem. His problem was evidently, and I'm, I may get this backwards and I'm not real clear on what they are, static and dynamic IP addresses. This, I think this one only has dynamic, yeah. and like his bank, and there's no way to switch it to static. No. His bank can't deal with a dynamic uh, IP so, address. Things like Hulu can't, he said. We, oh, yeah, they can. No, because almost everybody in the world, in the U.S. has dynamic. No no ISP will give you a... Static just means we're never going to change it. 
uh, and and usually you pay for that because and you know you usually care about it because you're running a server. So if you had a web server in your house, you'd want to have it be at the same address all the time. And there are solutions around this like Dyn DNS. But for inbound traffic like Hulu, shouldn't make any difference at all. Well, they they were talking about that that and a few other items. I don't remember the other. Unless they're running servers in their house, you know every every no the very few ISPs offer residential service with static addresses and if if they do you have to pay more for it dynamic is the way it normally is that's yeah. and I, I've, I've lived in a place for four years and the ip address didn't change but it was still dynamic it's just not guaranteed some, yeah exactly yeah. you may not get to keep it but it's it typically stays yeah it, it, it could be that uh there are other issues because the ip addresses as i remember when you're using t-mobile there may be other issues involved with that hulu should not care about that but there may be other issues. Again, a call to T-Mobile about this stuff, and I know it's hard because you're going to get some, you know, <laughs> customer service yeah. jockey that is looking at a notebook and doesn't know what he's talking about. Right. Um, right. Yeah, I I think that's fascinating. I I I just don't know uh, enough about this. I'm glad to get the report. Stay in touch because uh, I will. Yeah, I want to know. Yeah, and keep keep those records that you've got on how when the speeds are low and not because those will be helpful to an engineer who comes out. Excellent point. Thank you, Ed, Leo, and Micah. Your tech guys. More to come after this. It may be that the uh, cell companies change it more regularly. I don't Could know. Be. You're right. I Comcast hasn't changed my IP address ever. Yeah, because I do run a server. I run and. Uh, do you well, just actually, use a dynamic IP? I don't even do that. Oh, I just say, it just well, works. this is the address. <laughs> yeah. And if it changes, I'll have to change it. Right. It's for my Synology. And uh, it doesn't. It never does. Uh, reseller for T-Mobile on the business side. Well, business is different, Twisted Mister. Anyway, back to Mr. Scott Wilkinson, who uh, is already here. I don't have a clock for you, unfortunately. But oh, John, that's okay. I John's coming in, and he might. Do this. As of now, you have uh, about uh, eight thirty, I think. Wait a minute. That's Let me fine. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, two, one. one. You have eight fifty-three. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. Um. So yes, hi everybody. Um, Winthrop in the chat room has been mentioning um, a potential treatment for tinnitus, which is transcranial magnetic stimulation. And uh, I had, I, th I think I remember hearing something about that, but a, a long time ago and not very much. So he has piqued my interest. Uh, so I went and looked up, uh, uh, I looked that up and, oh, here I've got a, and I looked it up on PubMed. And there's actually a control, randomized control trial, transcranial magnetic stimulation for tinnitus using the tinnitus functional index to predict benefit in a randomized control tr controlled trial. And the results say baseline total TFI, uh, tinnitus uh, functional index score, and three of the a uh, of three of the eight. TFI subscales were useful in differentiating between responders and non-responders to TMS intervention. These findings are not definitive, but suggest potential factors that contribute to perceived benefit following TMS. So um, it, it may have some benefit. That uh, I'll have to look more into that because I do have it and uh, it I can ignore it, but it's annoying. Uh, and I, as I said, I can still get to sleep, which is good. Severe sufferers cannot, and that is a serious quality of life issue. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Winthrop says it's $3,000 for 10 sessions. Holy moly. Um Anyway, that's uh, – I'll, I'll check it out. I'm not sure I can spend – drop 3000 bucks on it. Uh, Bill in Michigan says, uh, at 68, I don't hear 10 k anymore. Well, that's that's pretty low. Uh, if, if you can't hear anything above 10 k then, yeah, that's 
that's that's some bad hearing loss. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, and then, as I said, I've got a dip where it's expected from noise-induced hearing loss, primarily uh, because of being in bands and orchestras and stuff, and sitting right right in front of the trumpets in the big band. That's right in my ear. That's a problem. Uh, but um, but I can hear. I, then it comes back in the in the very high end, which is very interesting and unusual. Uh, let's see. What else can I help you guys with? Oh, Retcon uh, was asking me about uh, professional sound equipment. In particular, he has a sound devices uh, field recorder. Um, I have a Tascam field recorder, which I use. It's got four in and looks like uh, his sound devices has uh, four XLR or quarter inch uh, and two channels of line in. Everything is configurable, yeah. Uh, 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 32 bit at 192 kilohertz. Uh, that's that's very good. Uh, so yeah, sound devices is great. If you've got uh, if you need a field recorder, it's top of the line. It's also quite expensive. I I don't know exactly, but uh, it's it ain't cheap. <laughs> Alan Gabriel, yes, tinnitus can be pronounced one of two ways, and they're both correct. Tinnitus or tinnitus. Uh, and I, for the longest time, I said tinnitus. But most of the audiologists I talk to say tinnitus, so I kind of changed. Um, Beatmaster, do I already know who my next AVS live stream guest will be? Actually, I don't. I'm still working on that. Um, I do have a number of people lined up for later. Uh, for example, the Value Electronics Flat panel shootout is happening at the end of July. So my first show in August is going to be people who were there. I've been invited to go, but I decided not to. I, I just, I don't have the time. And, uh, but I'm going to have some people from the, from the event on my show on August 9th. Uh, and here's a teaser for you. Uh, mo most of you know Andrew Jones, who is one of the best speaker designers in the world and a friend of mine. And he's been on, he was on my podcast before. What you probably don't know is that he's got a twin brother who designs amplifiers for a living. <laughs> so I'm working on getting both of them on the show. Uh, the twin Jones brothers uh, to talk about speaker design and amplifier design and the interaction between those two fields uh, should be very, very interesting. Uh, Owen, Andrew's twin brother, is actually what's called a mirror twin, which means that I, I believe Andrew is right-handed, Owen is left-handed. So they're, they're mirror identical twins. Very interesting. <clears throat> Uh, Phoenix Warp One, yeah, recording. I decided to record every two weeks instead of every week um, because I just wanted to have more time to get people and to do other things. Um, so I decided not to kill myself. Uh, W4RDM Ron, my ears would ring after eating tomatoes. Lab work confirmed very high potassium levels. Uh, reduced potassium intake, no ringing now. Wow, how interesting. I don't think I had heard that correlation. High potassium levels with tinnitus. I'll have to look into that. Um, bleep blurp. I had a company that did research into amps in the early 1970s. Sight and sound engineering. Well, sound engineering is important. I guess amps need to look like something too. Uh, the Cop King, quality over quantity. Yes, thank you very much. That is the goal. Exactly so. Chickenhead21 says blood pressure can affect tinnitus as well. I believe that's true. I haven't read any studies to that effect, but uh, I have heard it. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, 
as for my house search here in Santa Cruz, it's continuing. We haven't found a place yet. We hope to this month or next. Uh, next month, July 9th, anybody in the area, I highly recommend a concert that I'm doing. Uh, and uh, those of you who are close enough to, to come down, it's in Bonnie Dune, which is uh, in the mountains, in the forest above Santa Cruz. Uh, there's a a really interesting guy, used to be a high school teacher, science teacher, I think. His name is Preston Boomer. And he built a, an amazing place up in Bonnie Dune with a castle and a chapel with a pipe organ and catacombs and all signs, kinds of really cool stuff. And I'm playing a concert up there with my brass group and the organ, the pipe organ. Uh, and I'm also doing some other Renaissance stuff with another group, but it's really going to be cool. Thank you, Scotty. My pleasure. Have a great day in Santa Cruz. I bet it's perfect today. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I will be here next week. Will you? Yes, I will. Two weeks from now, I won't. Okay. Uh, no, I here. will. No, no, no. I'll be here. It'll, it'll be July 16th and 23rd. I won't be here. Okay. Well, we'll see talk about then. that then. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. I won't see you then. <laughs> well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy with Tech Guy 2, Mr. Micah Sargent. Yeah. <laughs> the crowd goes crazy. Uh, we, You're lucky today we got two of us to help you with your tech woes. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number, 888-827-5536. The area of a uh, of a circle is pi r squared, right? Correct. Yes. So, uh, if you are one mile away from the tower, that tower is serving an area of pi three point one four one five nine miles square miles. Okay. So I just thought I'd correct myself. Uh, I knew when I said it, a square mile it didn't make sense. It's uh, more like three square miles if you're a mile away from the town. Would the miles be square, though? Cause <laughs> no, they're round. <laughs> 8888 uh, Ask Leo. That's the phone number. And Lexman is on the line from Tempe, Arizona. Hello, Lexman. Hello. Welcome. Okay. Hello. Oh, happy oh, day. Oh, happy, 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 happy day. What's you up? Swallow my, then you swallow my food off? Okay. There you go. Okay. I've been listening for, you know, for a long time since the day with ZDTV. Oh, my oh, gosh. TV? Back to the 1990s. Uh, when you were hosting with Soldat O'Brien, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that was MSN. You know, that was the early days yeah, of MSNBC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And yep. they were spinning heads. Okay. Um, before I ask you a question, do you think you can... Plug, plug my uh, Windows 11 book. Plug you have it. a Windows 11 book? What's the name of it? Windows 11, Windows 11 tips, and, tips and Tricks. Tips and Tricks. Uh, and who did you self-publish it or uh, who publishes it? Uh, Amazon, through Amazon. Through yeah. Amazon. Windows 11 yeah, Tips Amazon. and Tricks. Kindle and, Kindle and paperback. And, Kindle it, and paperback. And it's in paperback on Amazon. I, I'm Kindle. Kindle and go back. Kindle and awesome. Well, congratulations. Did you just decide to do that on your own, Lexman? I'm a retired. I'm a retired computer teacher, you know. So ah. you know, instead of wasting my time away, and I'll do something, you know. That's brilliant. A high school computer teacher. Oh, that's wonderful. What's uh, in order to find it? Because I have a feeling Windows 11 tips and tricks might not be there are lots of results. <laughs> yeah. well, well, my, the name is uh, I use a pen name called Vazu Ganesh Lal. Oh boy, you're gonna have to spell that. That's the pen name. F oh, I found you. F F A Z U. Baju. J U. Then G A N E S H L A L. Wow. All right. Go to you know even even on the Twitter six listing, you know, Windows eleven tips and tricks. Well, Mike has found it, so he's gonna put a link in the show notes. So if anybody wants to take a look at your book, he can do that. By the way, I mentioned your name in the foreword because you know I learned so much from you. I mentioned your name in the foreword. Oh, oh I can, now I have to buy a copy, Bazu. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, for some reason, there's something wrong with Amazon searching because when I search for that, I also get London Magic Works, the penetrating pen, the classic pen through a dollar magic trick for $7.99. So clearly, Amazon has failed me. 
in this search. Oh, but I will I will I find it. Start. Micah found it, so we'll put a we'll put a link in the show okay. notes to it. Uh, and somebody else at the end, I also mentioned the tech guy. I'm going to the tech guy. And you should do three, two, one backup, and blah, 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 blah. Three, two, one backup. Although I give credit to Peter Krogh, the photographer, who was the guy who well, taught you know, me all about you that. Me so many times. Yeah. I, I, I'll, no, no, I'll take credit. B h a j u, b h a j u. That's that probably be enough to narrow it down. So, okay. what can we? If you're the guy who wrote the book, what can I do uh, to help you? Well, it has to really. Uh, it's been bugging me for a while. You know, the iPhone. In my iPhone, you know, you have notes, right? I have a whole bunch of notes, you know, especially the password hints. Not exactly the password, just the password hints, you know. Yep. A couple of letters, blah, 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 blah. Smart, yep, letters, yep, you know? yep. So I know what they are. Somebody looking at it doesn't know what, they, what it means. It's a double degree for somebody else. Perfect, yeah. Yeah, so so and not only that, I have you no know, website and what have you. So I got a whole bunch of stuff in the notes, iPhone. So you know where to export that into a single file so I can print it if I want to? So here's the thing. Um, I, I saw your question pop up, and so I did some research earlier while we were uh, talking about some other stuff on the show. you don't have to tell them that. This you is could true. pretend you're just a I'm genius. I'm just now and you're... discovering this. So I, already knew, <laughs> so I thought I had this already figured out, but I wanted to make sure. So I confirmed, yes, there's no easy way to export all of your notes. In other words... Uh, Mac OS notes and iPhone notes don't have an export command. They have an export oh. command for individual notes. One by one. But yes, no. you're wanting something oh. that does it all. And so here's my recommendation for you. Okay. There is an application that Leo and I both use called iMazing. That's I-M-A-Z-I-N-G. And iMazing okay. is available okay. as an app for both Apple or your Mac OS devices or on Windows. Okay. If you get iMazing... Well, I use for iPhone and Windows, yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. So since you have a Windows machine, you get iMazing, you plug in your iPhone, and iMazing will help you export all of your notes in any format you want. You can make them all into one PDF. You can print them. You can do whatever you want with them. Is it, is, really it, uh, is it free or you have to pay for it? It yeah. is free to download, and some of the features are available for free. I don't know if oh. the notes export is free. So how good is it I mean, in terms of well, it's more than just those notes. It it is a way to back up your iPhone. Of course, you have a I, Apple. Well, I have, you know, iCloud. It's yeah, cool. Apple has a way to do that automatically. Actually, there's two ways to do that automatically. But it will also back mm -hmm. up things that iCloud won't back up, like your messages, oh. your notes, and various things. Oh yeah, okay. it's very powerful yeah, and well yeah. worth it. Where does I mean it's this? Well, it? well, I wonder where okay. Apple. Uh, you know, the nice thing about this, you could take the notes on your iPhone, but you don't have a Mac. That's and that's why Baju. I knew we were yeah. going to need to do it this way. Because if you had a Mac, then you could just uh, shift and select a bunch and then export them. But because you yeah. don't have a Mac, because you're using a Windows machine, there's no easy way to export multiple notes. So you would have to go in again one by uh, one on your iPhone and do uh, that. Okay. Well, you know what? Get a Mac. Why not? <laughs> just go out and get a Mac. Will, then I your will, next book can be Mac OS tips and tricks. There you go. Yeah. So I'm thinking of that. Yeah, my, there's thing, one thing that's bugging me. You know, you know, Android has you know folding phone. When 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 will iPhone come up with a folding phone for crying out loud? Well, the rumor was that Google was working on it, but that's been delayed. Have you played with any of the folding phones, like the Samsung Flip? No. I haven't used anything except iPhone. I really like the Samsung Flip, but I am concerned. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to see people uh, complaining that after a year or two of opening and closing, because what it is is a screen that folds and has a you know fold uh, down the middle, yeah. that that crease so begins to weaken. Will ever come up with the iPhone, a folding iPhone? I think Apple won't do it until the technology... Uh, is is good enough that you can do it reliably. Uh, the uh, crease is invisible, and that may uh, never happen. Uh, there were rumors, right, Micah, that Apple was working. Or the thing is, Apple's got a lot of things in the labs yep, that they're never going to release, uh, so it doesn't really yeah. mean that. Much. I have iPhone 10. I've been waiting for a fully iPhone. <laughs> yeah. I can hear like yeah. seven years old or seven five years old by the time it comes up. <laughs> well, Great. by the iPhone 20. Maybe. 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 You like the idea of a phone that is smaller in your pocket but opens up and then gives you yeah, more screen. Up, yeah. But yeah. The thing, uh, Android, I don't like Android because it, you know, all the apps that are not, you know, controlled by, you know, not, you know, rated by, you know, uh, Google and so on. That's the one. You know, well, that's the other thing is that Android. the operating system has to really support it. Uh, because right. otherwise, you know, it, you fold it in half and it's not nothing special. Right. One thing good about Apple, you know, they, they, they're 
Uh, they would support it. Yeah. Well, that's right. Exactly. Yeah, they would well, support it. Hey, it's a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Lexman, Baju. Everybody, buy the Windows 10, 11 tips and tricks. We need it. You know, it's brand new. Uh, I'm using Windows 11 here on my brand new Dell. And uh, so far, so good. I, there were things that you have to learn that are different that you have to figure out. I did some research, and Apple stores the notes files on the PC uh, in, 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 a, in a database called SQLite, which uh, is actually a very cool way of doing it. So you could, and I'm sure such things exist, use a tool to export a SQLite database and you know, or just access the SQLite database to get all your notes. As far as the stuff that's stored in iCloud, um, I don't know if you can actually see that format. Yeah, it's, um, it's tough. And that's the other thing about iMazing is that it even has an option to just select all of them, yeah. all of the notes you want, and do an export. Yeah. You don't even have to do that individually or anything. Yeah. So to get them uh, without something like iMazing, you'd need a SQL app so that you can open up the database and all of that. There are some freely available ones like the SQLite browser, SQLitebrowser.org. That's one I use. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but iMazing is the obvious and easy solution. $35 one-time purchase for one iPhone, which is what you would be doing. Um, or you can pay 40 For iMazing. Yeah, for iMazing. Or you can pay $50 a year, and you can have as many devices uh, connected to it as you want. Nice. Well, I have to do something I haven't done in a long time. I have to look at the log. <laughs> All right. Break time. Micah Sergeant, Leo Laporte, your tech guys. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> terrible fishing attempt uh it's from lisa oh um, wow whose email is ceo mail at icloud.com wow with some numbers it says hi okay and this is the other part that's funny part of it is in uh the system font for apple which is san francisco uh, -huh. uh sf rather and part of it is where you can clearly tell they dropped in the, the <laughs> drop in so it says hi micah in a different font <laughs> Can you complete a task for me? I'm getting ready for a private meeting right now. Please give me your personal cell phone number. Oh, Thanks. please. <laughs> what a dumb so fishing dumb. attempt. So dumb. How dumb can you get? Mm. CEO mm -hmm. mail at iCloud.com. Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. But I'm sure people fall for that. They do. They do. It's amazing. Yeah. All right. So I don't have a clock, but I do have this. I do have this. I say, I do have this. Am I looking forward to Starfield? What's Starfield? Is that Star... Star? Uh, oh, is this the one with the 1,000 planets you can explore? I don't pay that much attention uh, to E3 announcements or E3 time announcements because there's so much time before they're going to be out. That it's like, well, I'm mm -hmm. not gonna, I'm not gonna get. It's just, it's disappointing. You have to wait so long. So I just don't really pay that much attention to it. What's your overall thought on um, pre-release games on like Steam? Do you? Is uh, it's, uh, well, Valheim, for instance, is still pre-release. Oh, is it? Yeah. So I have no problem with it. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Um, I think it varies. Some of them are really not done. And some of them are, like Valheim, very, very playable. More about just adding to Yeah, I mean, Valheim has a long way to go. Yeah. Unfortunately, it was so successful as a pre-release that I think there's not... They made so much money that I don't think there's a lot of incentive for them to... <laughs> they're not moving very fast, let's uh -huh. put it that way. That's, that's, what, that's what would be my concern, that well, specifically. If, so the thing is, yeah, don't assume it's going to get better. Just see if it's good enough for right now, right? Yeah, and that, I guess Steam has a better return policy uh, versus like PlayStation. Well, what game are you are you looking at? If you uh, buy a game on PlayStation and open it, you're done. Um, right, Micah's well, becoming a gamer. I know kids. we got to help Micah this get is bad. get into the culture. I've got ninety other things to that I want to focus on. Um, I can't remember now. It what is the game quite was. a time sink, I have to admit. This portion of the tech I brought to you by UserWay.org. Every website. This is the law, man. The law. Every website, without exception, has to be accessible. That's the ADA, the Americans with Disability Acts. And, you know, sometimes when you think about it, you know, if you've got a website, you might be thinking, oh, that's going to be a lot of work. That's what I thought. 
till I found UserWay. UserWay's incredible AI-powered solution tirelessly enforces the hundreds of WCAG guidelines, the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, WCAG guidelines. In a matter of seconds, I mean, literally, it's one line in JavaScript, UserWay's AI can achieve more than an entire team of developers can in months. So if you're saying, oh, gosh, do I have to do this? Yes, you do. It's the law, but also it's the right thing to do. You don't want to turn away more than 60 million users with disabilities because your website can't be used. UserWay solutions make it simple, easy, and cost-effective. In fact, first step, go there right now, userway.org slash twit, and use their free scanning tool to see if your website is ADA compliant. UserWay is used by some of the biggest companies in the world, like Coca-Cola and FedEx and Disney. So they have an enterprise tool as well. If you have an enterprise-level website with thousands of pages, UserWay offers a managed solution. Their team will handle everything for you. Costs much less than you might think, and it really works. UserWay's AI and machine learning solutions. They need it, machine learning and AI because, for instance, here's one example. I think it's obvious. Uh, you have to have alt tags for your images. Well, they have image recognition that can actually populate the alt tag. That's a woman with glasses with her small son. Now, if you want to, you can add, you know, your own content. That's a woman wearing our glasses, right? But they get you the start that you need. And in most cases, really, you don't have to do anything more. UserWay is taking these enterprise-level tools used by those big companies and making them available to small and medium-sized businesses at a price small businesses can afford. And, of course... They can scale with you. So as you get bigger, as you get more successful, UserWay can handle it all. UserWay is the number one accessibility solution in the market today. 61% market share for a reason. It's the best. So The Motley Fool, uh, as an example, uh, private financial news and investment advisor, great big website, 1,911 pages, over 20 million page views a month. They used... Uh, user way. They were already set up really for accessibility, but the development team, as it turns out, and you'll find this is the case, spent a lot of time keeping it up to date because they always had new pages. Standards are changing. They used user way to add an extra layer of accessibility to make it easy. And it was just one line of JavaScript and they're done. For years, user way has been on the cutting edge, creating innovative accessibility solutions that push the envelope of what's possible with AI, machine learning, and computer vision. UserWay automatically fixes violations at the code level. It auto, as I mentioned, auto generates image alts, remediates complex nav menus, ensures that all the pop ups are accessible, fixes vague link violations, fixes any broken links, makes sure that your website uses accessible colors but still remaining true to your brand. And UserWay will give you a report that includes all the violations that were fixed in your website so you know exactly what it did. It's very easy to use. It integrates. There's plugins for WordPress, Shopify, Wix, Sitecore, SharePoint. Uh, as I said, you know, almost any site with a single line of JavaScript can implement it. It was very easy for us to implement it. Actually, Susan Bennett is here, the voice of Siri. She likes UserWay too, right, Susan? Hi, I'm Susan Bennett, the original voice of Siri. You won't hear me say something like this too often. I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're looking for. But every day, that's what the Internet is like for millions of people with disabilities. UserWay fixes all of that with just one line of code. UserWay can make any website fully accessible and ADA compliant. With UserWay, everyone who visits your website can browse seamlessly and customize it to fit their needs. It's also a great way to showcase your brand's commitment to the millions of people with disabilities. It's just the right thing to do. And it's easy with UserWay. Go to userway.org slash twit. You'll get 30% off UserWay's AI-powered accessibility solution. UserWay makes the internet accessible for everyone. Visit userway.org slash twit today. Thank you, UserWay. Appreciate the support of the Tech Guys show. Back to the show we go. Is the theme songs Micah would like? <laughs> it's sort of an era. This is like early college era for me. <laughs> okay. Like two years ago. Oh, God. 8888, ask Leo the phone I number. I wish I was that young. 888 <laughs> Uh, it is, oh, today's the day in 1903. Thank you for that history, Retcon 5. Today is the day in 1903 
So it's 99 years ago. Next year, it'll be a big anniversary. Henry Ford founded the Ford Motor Company with $28,000 in cash from 12 investors. Coincidentally, also the day he joined Twitter and got canceled in yeah. like five <laughs> minutes. I, we talked about that at the beginning of the show. I think if people like Ford, who was kind of a notorious jerk, mm -hmm. uh, and Thomas Edison, who was also a notorious jerk, but were revered, they were the great men of that era, uh, if they'd had Twitter, uh, they might have a worse reputation than Elon Musk, you know? <laughs> Yes. But basically, the, the, I think the thing we've learned here is stay Just off Twitter. Never tweet. Never, never tweet. tweet. No good ever came of a tweet. Well, that's not true, but... Yeah, we can't say that for many, sure. But. In many cases. Most often, no I've gotten, good comes I've, from I've tweet. had regrets over tweets many, many times. Regrets, I've had a few, yeah. as uh, tweets, Frank Sinatra, I've had a notorious few. tweeter, said. And then again... Richard in Scranton, to mention. PA. <gasps> what? Have you been to the you? <laughs> to the paper company? Scranton, oh, okay, we got to warn you. Micah is a big fan of The Office, <laughs> which in England uh, was based in Slough. They were trying to find a place equally boring for <laughs> in the U.S., and they came up with Scranton. I don't think Scranton's boring. Scranton has great Pennsylvania Dutch cuisine. Do you love Scranton, Richard? I've lived here for about thirty eight years, so I'm I'm used to it. You're used to it. <laughs> okay. What can we do for you today? Well I have a uh a Dell Chromebook eleven and I kinda of notice that, that there's stars the beer and stuff supporting it in July. Yeah, this really bums and, me out, yeah. Yeah. Um what can I do with it after, after July and they start supporting it? Well, the good news is, is, so this happens to all computers eventually, right? The company that made the operating system, Microsoft, Dell, Apple, says, okay, this is it. Here's the cutoff date. You know, it's five years. You bought this, what, how long ago? Well, I, I, bought, it, I bought it used... Um, ah. A year, year, year yeah, ago, so. and probably the person who sold it to you should have told you this, but uh, you know he might have bought it five years before. Uh, after a certain uh, num number of years, they 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 go out of uh, support, which means you're not going to get security patches. Now that's the end of the line if it's on a Windows machine. Not so much on a Chromebook. Uh, you're not going to get updates. Your Chrome will uh, probably get Chrome up. I don't know. Will it get Chrome updates? The Chrome no. OS will not get updates. But that doesn't mean it's it's insecure yet. Really when it's going to be time to retire this thing is when you go to sites and it's and and this won't this is years away and they say, oh, "I'm sorry, you can't use that version. You can't use Chrome 100 on this site. You need Chrome 200." Uh, and I don't I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. The Chromebooks are inherently secure. So even if there is a security flaw found, it's unlikely that that would be an issue for you, is, is I guess my point. So I think you, you can continue to use it until such time as you say, well, maybe it's time for me to, to get a new, uh, new Chromebook. They're not very expensive. That's the other advantage of a Chromebook. No, I, I actually paid about 60 bucks for this one. Right. And the person who bought it probably paid about three or 400 bucks for it. Uh, yeah. You can get Chromebooks for as little as 250 bucks, brand new. This is, though, it bugs me because, uh, you know, I wish companies... It's a perfectly good computer. It's not that the computer itself is in any way flawed. It's just that the operating system is no longer going to be supported. So uh, I, I guess my attitude when it's a Chromebook is don't worry. You're going to be fine. Okay, and when and when you do go out and buy a Chromebook, it'll say when the end of life date is, when it's not going to receive software updates. Uh, there is a, a Google document that's probably the best place to find it. So you can you can search for the name of your Chromebook and the end of life, and Google will tell you. Unfortunately, it really uh, it's not very consistent. It's it's five years, six years can be longer. Uh, so there's no way I can say, well, if you bought it today, you're going to have six years. You have to really check that uh, that standard. I wish they didn't do this, but I understand why companies, you can't really expect companies to support this stuff forever. So, But the good news is the Chromebook is so secure 
that I, I think only becomes an issue if there is some sort of massive flaw that nobody anticipated that means, you know, anybody can log into your Chromebook. I don't see that happening. Most of the flaws would be little flaws. More likely what's going to happen is you're going to go to a site and it's going to say, I'm sorry, your Chrome, the version of your browser is out of date. And that's years away. So keep, in other words, keep using it, Richard. Fear not. It's okay. I do not make the same recommendation of people using Windows or Mac. That's not the case. Not the case with Android. Not the case with iOS. But it is the case, I think, with Chromebooks. They're designed to be secure. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the phone number. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, Johnny Jet, coming up. I have to get an external keyboard. I shouldn't have to lean in for that. Ah, oh, my external keyboard drawer. Do you? What are you? Are you mocking my external keyboard drawer? <laughs> I might be, <laughs> sir. Do you want uh, uh, this uh, lovely uh, System 76 uh, Unix laptop? Linux laptop? Oh, yes. Okay. 100% yes. Yeah. <gasps> yes. Um, let me wipe it, actually. Okay. It yeah, me. yeah. Um, I would love that. Yes. It's actually... Because I don't get to use my... Because my Raspberry Pi runs in the background. Oh, you could use this as a Raspberry Pi if you want. I don't to, get to use my that. you know yeah. Linux as much because right. it's just sort of uh, there to, to be the stuff that I have it for. So that would be awesome to have a Linux machine. Hose it off, too. It looks like it's gunji. It's gunjili. Scongeli. <laughs> it's a somewhat a scongeli. Where I are think... you reporting from today? Who? Oh, John and John and John John. Hello, John John. Hello, scongeli makes me think of my dad since yeah. he loved eating scongeli. <laughs> Wait, that's a real thing? I thought you were just making words. What's no, scongeli? Scongeli is it's like. Is that squid? It's, uh, no, it's. Um, What's it called? It's a certain kind of uh, mollusk. Like, uh, oh, okay. Don't eat a squingeely in the months ending in R. It's like uh, a seafood pasta, but there's uh, I'm, I'm spacing on the stuff that's in there. I'll have to look it up. At least at least that's what I believe. Uh, I'm still in Toronto. Oh, well, hell. Uh, you're going to stay there for months, aren't you? No, 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 no. We're actually going on a little trip uh this in a few days well good for you good for you so, i'll leave uh, manjaro on here do you have a linux preference i do not manjaro um, is my personal favorite yeah i'll i trust your judgment yes i mean you're a guy with a penguin that says i heart linux so I trust uh -huh. your judgment. thanks to you <laughs> it's conch it's slice conch it's conch oh yeah. really oh. Yeah. Do they give you the shell afterward? Congeely. It's congeely. No, no, no. Eh? Um, yeah, that's what my dad loves. And I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> if there is in Linux a reset to factory, probably not. <laughs> it's a good test. Let's see. So, uh, you enjoying your time there? Definitely. I'm getting a lot of work done. My Good. kids and wife are, are catching up with their cousin and their nice. grandma. Nice. The Yankees are in town. Oh I get to my. watch them on TV. They're on right now. And uh, I'm thinking about going to the game tomorrow, although. That's yours, right? That's Is there another the, one? Uh, no, Zoom, that's the Ethernet going to yours? Yeah. I was wondering what that Ethernet was for. There, I got one. Oh, no, I don't have Ethernet. You don't? Mm -mm. Oh, you know what? I dropped it back down, probably. The only thing I have is USB C that I've Sorry, powered I'll into. Steal it from the. Uh, and then my headphones. Steal jack. it from the. You going to see the Blue Jays? Well, I'm a Yankee fan, but they're Yankees playing the Blue Jays. Jays. That's a the terrible. Yankees. The Toronto Stadium is awful. What? Awful. You think so? Yeah, you like it? It's. it's, it's yeah. It's cavernous. When the roof's open, it's just uh, in a beautiful day. Oh, man, I love that view. Oh, all right. Well, it does have a nice view. Does he, Can you see the tower? Can you see the end tower? From yes, yeah. for sure. It's yeah. right there. Yeah, it's literally right there. right there at the bottom. Yeah, it's at the bottom of it. Oh, oh, oh. oh. What I are the lyrics, the, Leo? I hear the uh, Postal Service lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> oh. If you're going to win a muck back, 
with me you can ride. So and he opened up the door and he said, "Sit down inside." <laughs> uh, asked me if I had ever seen a road with this much dust and sand, and dirt. I said, "Listen, I've traveled every road in this here land, ladies and gentlemen. He's been everywhere, man. Johnny Jet, our traveling guru, driving up and down the coast, flying hither and yon. Now he's where are you? Are you in Toronto?" I'm in Toronto, Canada. Does Toronto have a nickname? Toronto. You're saying T-dot? Toronto. T dot. T dot. Yeah, they they, they the, the end silent when they say it. Like, like Toronto. 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 Or the T. Sorry, the T is silent. Yeah, the T is silent. Toronto. Toronto. But they say or they say T dot or T dot. Home of the Raptors. And the Blue oh, Jays. And you're going to go to a Yankees Blue Jays game, huh? I see you have the hat. Yeah, on. I'm thinking about. It, I think most people would say home of the Maple Leafs. Oh, oh big hockey town. Yeah. Isn't that like home of the disappointment? I hear the Maple Leafs are not. <laughs> yeah, it's true. They did make it to the playoffs, and, um, but it's also home to the National the Hall of Fame, oh, Hockey okay. Hall of Fame. You know, is hockey a, is not the national sport of Canada. What is? It's, it's what I played in college. Curling. No, it's not. <laughs> I don't see you as a he, curler. He, he choked up on like it's, a baseball. It's, it's, it's lacrosse. Lacrosse. Oh, lacrosse. I didn't realize this meant lacrosse. I'm oh. learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played. A, I played attack in college. So, oh. um, I think yeah. Canadians must be angry about the Stanley Cup when you have teams like the Tampa Bay, Florida Lightning. Well, Florida Florida hasn't been in the. They haven't the, been in 20-something years. I know, and the Colorado Avalanche. I can see why you don't want to call hockey your national sport. Well, they haven't won it in 20-something years. Yeah. That's the real reason. Yeah. Are they really good at lacrosse? No. I mean, listen, I don't even know if all Canadians know it's their national sport, but uh, they invented it. Yeah. The well, Canadians, the so. Indians did. The, I'm see, sorry, yeah. the First Nation. The, yes. So, Johnny, um, uh, let's talk travel. Let's talk it. Let's talk about uh, it. My daughter in Portugal doesn't have to get a COVID test to come home. For sure. A lot of New Zealand, you don't need a... Uh, they just dropped it this week. You can Actually, go. Think it can you Monday. go without a test? Well, you, well, yeah. Now they're dropping wow. the uh, test requirement. Um, so, two point four over two point four million people passed through uh, TSA checkpoints yesterday, <gasps> which is wow. the highest since uh, November twenty eighth, which was a Sunday after Thanksgiving, which is notoriously the busiest travel day of the year. People are so traveling. They are out there, and it is chaos all over the world. You know, there's so many people traveling, but the airports and the airlines are understaffed. People have COVID, calling in sick. They can't train people fast enough. So pack your patient patients and make sure you travel on off-peak days. I mean, I'm telling people Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturdays, and and you know, try and take that first flight out in the morning. And also, I wrote a post yesterday about you know, this is the summer not to check a bag. You, I know it seems difficult. When I first dated my wife. She lived in Toronto here, and I live in L.A., and she met me there, and we were going to um, – our one of our big first trips, we were going to Hawaii, then Australia. And she showed up with, like, a trunk from a steamship. I was like, whoa, 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 listen. I, you know, I like you, but I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't check bags. And she's like, I can't. I'm a girl. I'm like, please. Anyway. Johnny, don't play that light. game, that he I don't. heavy bag game. No. <laughs> I don't. Because when, when, when you don't check a bag, you and have so much flexibility. she still married you? Listen, she actually is now even more of a tyrant than me when it comes oh, to wow. um, carry on back. Yeah, She's like, you're packing two, too much stuff. You have two kids now, so you got a diaper well, now, bag. Now we, check a, now, we, now we have a U-Haul. We yeah. have a U-Haul yeah, yeah, when we travel. Yeah, yeah. But before that, but anyway, we'd go on, we'd literally go on round the world trips. We'd do multiple round the world trips nice. back to back, carry on only. And um, so when you don't check a bag... It's really not as hard as you think it is, but you know if the if the um, you don't have to first of all show up to the airport early. You don't have to wait around and see if your bag comes out. You don't have to worry about things getting lost or stolen, and if your flight is delayed or canceled, you can easily jump on another one. You can take public transportation, so it's so much cheaper and faster into the cities and stuff like that. But and now I don't know if you saw the pit images out of Heathrow. There's literally piles of bags. They've lost them. Uh. Or they can't find. The, they're they're having serious problems and. and and right now, they just the DOT just came out with the reports for um, the first quarter. They've lost more bags this year than they – like 20% more than last year. And it's just going to get worse. So try not to check a bag. I know it sounds 
easier than it is, but if my wife can do it, anyone can do it. Seriously. And I'm not trying to throw her on the bus. She's an amazing packer. Now you just got to practice. Yeah. Yeah. And do some research. Yeah. No, it's a good thing to know uh, how to do that. Actually. It's a really good thing. Yeah. yeah. But show up extra early. If you're traveling in the airports, I'm telling people, are, people are um, like in Amsterdam and London, you got to show up four hours early to make it through security. Yikes. You, you have to. Um, especially on these peak days. That's why when I'm flying these days, I'm flying Wednesdays or Tuesdays or Saturdays. And I'm trying to take the first flight out to avoid thunderstorms I'm flying or to a domino effect. Rhode Island a week from Monday. Is Monday a bad day? Rhode Island. Monday is not, Monday's not a great day because that's when the business travelers are out. But there's not a lot of business travel in the summer. So you should be okay. We'll get there um, early. I think it's, it's better a- than Sunday. Let's put it that way. Sunday yeah. is not a good day to fly yeah. or Friday. Are you flying out of the Charlie Brown airport or somewhere else? Charlie Brown airport. No, no. I'm flying. Yeah. mean that. Schultz. Sonoma. Sonoma. Yeah, no, we're flying out of SFO and, uh, cause it's SFO to Boston to Logan. And then, uh, we're flying home Friday. So Friday's bad, huh? Friday is not a good day to travel. Is it the first flight out? No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 well, I'll report in uh, in a couple of weeks and oh, let you know. CO. Huh? Your yeah, CO. listen. Your CO sensor. I will. Oh, Johnny, I wanted to ask you about that. So I've been seeing sure. a lot of people uh, carrying carbon dioxide sensors on airplanes to see if the airplanes are really living up to their promise of refreshing right. the air. And I've seen a number of friends of mine show CO readings in the high thousands, which means, no, there isn't good ventilation. Of course, bad ventilation means problems with COVID. So I, you know, I'm going to, I bought a CO detector and I'm a CO2 detector. I'm taking it with me on the next two flights uh, on JetBlue and Alaska, and I will report back. It's so interesting because I actually just read an article like last week about it. And I went, went to go look at it to buy one because I'd never even heard of that. Um, doing something like that. Yeah. Although uh, the carbon, I'm not, they're, they're, it's different than the carbon monoxide. Um, not monoxide, dioxide. House, right? Yeah, yeah, that's monoxide okay. I, and that's poisonous. Okay. Dioxide gotcha. is what we're breathing out all the time. And okay, if that's where if, I messed up. If the level's high, it's not fresh air anymore. It's, I see. Right? Because- uh, I got to get one. Yeah. Well, I, 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 the, I the one I got, I'll tell you the name of it in a second as soon as I find it. The Please, one I got put, it in is the, put it in the chat room. I will. It's 250 bucks, which is not Forget cheap. It. Runs on regular <laughs> batteries. It's not lithium uh, ion batteries. So that's good, right, for getting on the plane. And uh, and uh, apparently runs along to like years on a, on a set of batteries. So okay. I will uh, I will I, give you the deets because. Yeah, I, I heard that. And that is, I, I really want to check that out. And also, I was actually telling people to carry carbon monoxide ones for when you travel because you know what happened in the Bahamas last month when multiple people died was that, three people was that in two different rooms monoxide yes. that they that, yes oh, it came out that's sad yikes so, so there was a furnace it ha- it or often. heater hot water heater or something that wasn't vented properly and got in the room I'm not sure what it was but it did the um well we do you know I have of course in every home should have a carbon monoxide detector along with your smoke detector uh, because yeah, that's a problem, right? That's yeah. And you problem. can buy them for cheap, like, I think 30 to $50 yeah. on Amazon and, and they're, they're compact. So you can bring it with you. This is uh, uh, my friend Harper's uh, tweet from, and then he doesn't say what airline he's uh, flying, but this is his uh, picture. Oh, I can't show you. I was going to show you, but I forgot. I don't have a screen, but he has uh, something called the era net four, a R a N E T four. And he's getting a carbon dioxide reading of 1,574, which is basically, you know, you're in a stuffy room. And you right. don't want to see that on an airplane because you can't open the windows, I found out. I tried. <laughs> and they don't like that very much. Yeah, no, they don't like that. Yeah. So, uh, and I saw a number of people responding uh, to uh, his tweet with similar very high readings. So uh, here's an, uh, from Seattle to Australia. So that's a long flight. Guy's got 1,901. Good Lord. That's, what? That's, that is ridiculous. That's not right. That's not right. Oh. So I'll report back and I'll, I'll put the link to the Aeronet smoke Please. or a carbon dioxide detector. At that shows. level, you want to... Thank you, Johnny. Oh, Leo Laporte, Thank you. Micah Sargent, the tech guy. Oops. Yeah, yeah. There it is. That's the tweet. Yep. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear this because you know what? Maybe this will uh, get those... Get the pilots or the airlines to, you know, ship up, man. This is ridiculous. 
they're well, I wonder, you know, what's going on? Why are they, you know, why is it that high? Um, I don't know. And I don't know if it's, um, you know, when the pandemic hit, Boeing had a call. They had, they invited 20 I travel remember. writers on. Yeah. And they were saying, you know, how good the air quality is, better than hospitals. And I asked a question. I said, should you put the air valve over you, the, the um, air, you know, what do you call it? Turn that the the, that blower on. Yeah. yeah. I what said, they should say? you put it on and make a force field, which I've heard many times from people. Right. And the guy from Boeing could not. He's like, you know what? We're doing, we we're don't doing know. a study on it right now. We yeah, don't, we know. don't and know. And I'm like, what? Yeah. I need to know because I've been doing this for years, decades, trying to protect myself from people's germs. And am I, am I blowing the germs on me or am I keeping them away? So according to uh, Aaron, that if the CO2 levels go above 1,400 parts per million, which it was on that airplane, your cognitive abilities drop by 50%. You get, you? You get foggy, not to mention because the air's not getting exchanged, all of that that they're saying about, you know... Uh, <laughs> Your, your COVID risk is wrong. It's a lie. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to bring this with me on these uh, next two trips. Please. Yeah. You know, the airlines are going to start banning them now, probably. Yeah, they don't like, want you to know. Yeah. Very annoying. Very annoying. I'm really, I'm really disappointed. Yeah. Honestly. Well, you it's should just, get this. Uh, it's they're, they're not cheap. They're 250 bucks. But no. uh, I ordered one because I thought, well, golly, um, I'm, I think I should, I need to know that. Definitely. Uh, yeah. I, I, I yeah. think I might have to splurge and get one. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that um, shocking? It also tells you what the relative humidity and temperature is, if you want to know that, too. <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe I saw the same tweet. Cause I, saw, I, I saw a tweet or I read an article, and I was like, oh, I didn't realize you can bring that on. Well, so. I'm not sure I would put it on the trade table for all to see. But, I would. Uh, I'd be like, listen, look to the flight attendant. The flight attendants should know. They they probably don't know. They want to. They, they don't know. know. They definitely don't know. They know. The pilots probably don't know. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. I mean, it, I, I guess the question is, was it that way briefly or was it that way for a long time? And then this guy, Diego Ray, has one that does CO2 and radiation. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. What an odd combination. Yeah, it is. Here's a sensor that does Sounds like it's specifically for flying, right? Um, what yeah, like I, I would take night, I'd take night flights uh, just to keep the radiation from my kids. Yeah, yeah. Somebody oh, uh, away, in the away. chat room is saying incredibly ignorantly, um, oh, you've just got COVID head. You're vaccinated. What are you worried about? I'm worried about getting COVID, you idiot. <laughs> I'm worried about it, too. You freaking idiot. Yes. I'm worried about getting COVID. I'll tell you why. First of all, these new variants are not very, you're not very well protected. I'm quite double boosted. But as as are many people I know who are sick with COVID. Yeah, yeah sure. You don't get right now. You don't get terribly sick, but there's the prospect of long COVID. We don't know what the cardiovascular impact of COVID is. It seems to be dramatic and long term. We don't know what the what the lung problems are, the heart problems, I think that that's a, a stupid Agreed. thing, not to mention the fact that you then are spreading it to other people, you ass. And those people could die. One million people have died. What's wrong with you? Okay, thank you. I'm done. <laughs> tell, me how you, tell me how you really yeah, feel. Yeah, what an idiot. I'm, this is a problem in this country. It's these people saying, oh, yeah, it's all right. Go ahead, yeah. go COVID. I'm going to visit my 88-year-old mom. Hey, Johnny, right. thank you. Is this one of your young people's songs? It is. <laughs> <laughs> this is Phoenix, right? Correcto, says Professor Laura, musical director. 8888, uh, ask Leo the phone number. The, uh, the uh, uh, We'll put a link in the show notes to the carbon dioxide detector I bought. I don't know if it's the best or anything. I just noticed that my friend Harper had one. So uh, I thought, well... If it, I like that it's got the little uh, e-ink display. It's, yeah, it's kind of cool, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not cheap. 250 bucks. But it probably lasts a long time because it's got an e-ink display. Well, that's what they said. Years, like four years uh, on nice. a set of batteries. So anyway, I'm not too worried about that. I just... I'm a little worried about going on the airplane when there's no With ventilation. that level, yeah. Because you know, even if it's just, even if it was just the CO2, CO2 makes you very sleepy. Uh, you are 
you are also then breathing in a lot more skin cells from other people. Like there's all this extra stuff that's you going on with that yuck. high level of CO2. <laughs> now you're scaring me. I know. So even outside, even if it was a normal situation, it's still not great to this see that This company high level. that makes this, Aranet, A-R-A-N-E-T, says that when the uh, carbon... Uh, dioxide levels reach 1,400 parts per million. And by the way, in that airplane, it was hot, much higher than that. Your cognitive abilities drop by 50%. Yep. And we've all experienced that. Classrooms, particularly, with uh -huh. the windows aren't open and it's stuffy. And, in my know, home studio, if I don't open the door. And yeah. you kind of go, ah. I, honestly, you should bring an oxygen saturation <laughs> tool with you, too, so you can see how much O2 is in your blood. Oh, if you're breathing that much CO2. Oh, good thinking. Mm -hmm. I have that from uh, from 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 that pandemic. Remember that? I remember that. Yeah. Uh, John on the line from Northridge, California. Hi, John. Leo and Micah, the tech guys. Hey, thanks so much, Leo and Micah, for taking our call. And thank you, Leo, for all you do. Oh my gosh, you're welcome. I I love. Hey, Leo. I'm very lucky. Yes, oh. sir. Also, thank you so much for being the, well, I guess the final nail in the. Uh, decision coffin making lid back in 2013 when I purchased my uh, 65 inch Panasonic VT50. Oh, I mean, it yeah, it is to this day beautiful. That's the I mean, that's I the Viera it. plasma. You got one of the last plasmas ever made. Yeah, it, it, it's beautiful to this day, Leo. Yeah, we have one uh, that every time I see it, I go, I, what? Why did they stop making plasmas? Those are great screens. Yeah. Even in a semi-bright room, uh, I mean, I watch my wife watches certain uh, shows, and it does get a little bit of burning. But you don't see burning unless you're watching downhill skiing or something on a pure white screen, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But yeah. Any, anyway, yeah. Leo, Mike, good. I'm glad you like it, and I'm glad to be the final nail in your decision coffin. By the way, that's the new motto of the show: yep. we're the final nails in your decision coffin. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> that, that should work really well. <laughs> what can I do? What else can we do for you today? Well, I have a. Well, here I go again. You know, I got the old TV. I've got a early 2008 iMac, which has been just absolutely fantastic. It's out of memory. Yeah, but, 2008 is you know, a long time ago. Yeah, the 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 thing in the last eight years, I haven't, you know, and I don't know IMAX that well, but I I uh, didn't stay up on it, and I think they probably let notices out. But where did my iPhotos go? <laughs> oh yeah, they replaced it with photos. They took the eye. Yeah, out. but photos is so much like iPhoto that I don't know if. It, it could uh, go up to El Capitan. Did you have El Capitan installed on it before? Is that when they replaced yeah, I, iPhotos? No. No, 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 no. But I'm wondering oh, if Oh, that computer has, could be updated. Yeah, if he yeah, has Yeah, and Capitan, in the process of updating, know. and I don't remember which Mac OS it was, but at one point when you updated to Mac OS, they replaced iPhotos with photos. I think it was Mojave or around about that time. Uh, if I do a finder search and I look for iPhotos, I find the file. Right. And I try to double click to open it and it says, oh, no, this. You don't have it problem. anymore. <laughs> so no you should look for a program it. called Photos, which you should have on there. Oh, I do, but it, uh, they're not there. You know, what oh, I'm, you're yeah. saying when you open Photos, it does not see your uh, iPhoto photos because it's supposed to open that file and convert it. Mm -hmm. And it does no. not. Oh. I'm looking at. I go back now. like maybe. Maybe like three years, four years. And then the older okay. stuff's gone. Yeah, I'm yeah. seeing it's uh, as simple as opening up the new Photos app and going up to the top, choosing File, clicking Import, and then finding that iPhotos library that you just mentioned that you had on your uh, Mac. And you should be able to, to import, import it. it. So you can't double click it, but you could import it. Well, I guess if you have, like I had, probably thousands of photos. Okay, there it goes. Uh, Meet Mr. 39,000 photos in my Apple Photos. And in fact, I've crashed Apple Photos. <laughs> they have so many photos in it that during the import process, it's actually crashed multiple times on me. I just reopen it and chugs away some more. I think it has something to do with trying to keep all of that in its head. Or maybe the CO2 levels are too high in the office. I don't know. But uh, it does eventually get them all. And I'm now all, and have been for some years, fully migrated over to photos. I think there are differences. Uh, and at first I was a little perturbed, as one often is when they change things. 
But ultimately, I think uh, photos is better, and and you will eventually like it better, or or else. It will be the nail and final nail in your decision coffin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, no, I want to. Uh, this has been the most fantastic machine. This, this iMac. It, 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 I don't know how to use it that well, but it's been fantastic, and I'm willing to buy another iMac. But um, yeah, I can't open. Yeah. Unless it's. Are you importing it now? Did you try importing it now? That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. And it doesn't open. What is it saying? Yeah. It like imports one file. Um, well, see the way photos. Okay, there's one other thing you can do. In fact, this is probably the best thing to do. So you have that old iPhotos file still. Preserve that. Yeah. That thing should be many gigabytes in size. Is it? Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. All the good news is all the original photos are in there. Uh, what it is, it's not. It looks like a single file. It's actually a folder. This is what Apple calls a package. And if you co command click or right click on that file and select open package, you'll see it as a folder. And inside that folder will be a subfolder called originals or original photos, depending on who made the folder. Uh, original photos contains unmodified all the photos in your Apple Photos collection. So if you can't get the import working directly from that file, drag or copy the original photos out of the package onto your desktop and import those. And those will all go in just fine. You haven't, as long as you still have that original iPhotos uh, file, you're, okay, you're golden. You still have all your photos. Okay. I'll, so I'll right, you, you, you yeah. understand that? that it's, you're going to want the context menu, which is command, click, or if you have a two-button mouse, which by now almost everybody does, you right-click on it. And it will pop up a menu, and at the bottom of it, it says Open Package. That's opening that iPhotos Files folder, and inside there's another folder which says Originals, and that's really what you want. Okay. Okay, very good. Yeah. Thanks you, so much, Leo. You haven't lost anything. That's the biggest tragedy of all. Now, you're backing up, I hope. Yeah? Well, yeah, I have iDrive. And oh, good. Okay. As yeah. long as you're backing that up, uh, I'd even with photos, I, I make three or four copies because the one, you know, that's one of the things you really don't want to lose is your your family photos. Your you know your exactly your, your, yeah. that's your history, right there, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. Exactly. To make a copy, even if it's just taking an external drive and dragging it over before you mess with that iPhotos file. I don't want you to. I don't want that to get damaged anyway because that's the one copy you have right now of everything. Keep that safe. Okay. One quick question, Leo. Sure. What is 181 gigabytes of other? <laughs> uh, crap. It's junk. It's crap. And it's a really big annoyance. Apple does this to us. It's, it's a cache, basically. Uh, it's uh, data files from your messages, from your iMessages. It's a bunch of other stuff. There's no easy way to get rid of it except for rebuilding the phone or the drive. Uh, it's supposedly going to get cleared out over yeah. time. There's an app I recommend if you're willing to pay for it. It's called Clean My Mac, and it I I actually do use this app. Uh, it's made by folks, yeah, who uh, who are working really hard to make sure that your system is clean. Okay, as soon as it hits that stab, you can't say anything. Okay, because what happens is it goes bump, and then it continues on. That stab has a. Um, uh, queue for automation machines. So half of the stations you got cut off uh. in the middle of a sentence. So if if you can, as soon as you hear that music, you got to start rapping. And if you can, I mean, if you do want to say something like that, which is worth saying, say, hang on for a second. Got it. To do after. Leo Laporte or Micah Sargent, the tech guy. Mm -hmm. But your your last word should be dump at that dump because otherwise, uh, I mean, not not everybody, not everybody says but Laura, people, but yeah. enough are automated that no they'll keep you going but they get mad because you're eating into their ad time <laughs> do they though they do okay and then they speed you up so that they can fit all the ads in right hey that's you it basically the you sh i mean i miss it I do miss it sometimes, often. But yeah. In fact, lately, because to uh, you told me, Laura, that uh, it doesn't have to be exactly. There's a second or two. 
Yeah. So if you're just wrapping up that sentence at that bump, you're okay. But it's better to not even be in that situation. Ideally, you don't yeah. you don't want to do that. Yeah. And it's hard to do because I, I, I it took me years to not run into it. But that's why I needed this clock, which I still haven't put on this thing. I got to do that. Honestly, there's a lot more hedging I was going to do because some people think that no hedging. Clean my Mac is not. No yeah, hedging. There's no room for hedging. No hedging. No. And that's the other reason I don't bring up clean my Mac <laughs> because you're right. If you're going to say clean my Mac, you got to hedge it, and yeah. I don't want to hedge it. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches. Micah Sargent's here. He's here to help you, your tech guy, too. 8888-ASK-LEO is the phone number. 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. Outside that area, you can still reach us, but it's going to be... Uh, via Skype out, something like that. Mark is in Idaho Falls, Idaho. Hello, Mark. Welcome to the show. Hello, Hello Leo. Uh, first time caller. Um, uh, back to the uh, carbon dioxide radiation monitor. Yes. Uh, comment. Uh, people can get a medical isotope uh, from, their, uh, from their hospital and three hours later be on the plane with you. Ah, and they can be re they can be reading pretty. Uh, it's not cosmic rays. It could be my uh, seat partner. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to know. I wasn't going to get an isotope monitor, but that's actually good information. And you know, there you know, OSHA says you're not going to die unless uh, you know there's like something like four forty thousand parts per million of CO two in the air. But yeah, but. You know, outdoor air is about 200 to 400 parts per thousand. Uh, you might get a little drowsy after a thousand. I don't expect to see an airplane at close to 2,000 parts per million. I think that that's where that's a concern, right. not from suffocation, but uh, from COVID exposure, because, you know, that means right. they're not, not exchanging right. the air. And they promised to, they promised they would exchange the air. So that's why we were talking about. Okay. Now, now on to your Android phone, which is much more important. I've got an Android, yeah. I've got an L, uh, LG G6. Okay. And it uh, the battery is getting weak, so it powers itself down every so often when I'm least expected and uh, most needed. <laughs> yeah, of course. And when I power it back up again, um, I Barnes & Noble has uh, that app, that reading app, is uh, embedded itself to where it starts itself up. And I don't want that to start itself up. Is there some way I could stop it from doing that? Yeah, I mean, let's first talk about the battery thing. The phone's about five years old now. That's about right. when batteries start to run out. All lithium-ion batteries have a, uh, a number of discharge charge cycles, usually around 500, after which they stop taking a charge. Here's the problem. LG has gone out of the phone business. So know. you ain't going. I'm sad. You ain't going to get another battery for that in all likelihood. You might be able to if you could figure out how to get it in there, and there might be somebody at you break I fix or somewhere like that that will put it in. But uh, yeah, certainly you don't want things auto starting. Uh, let me ask you about how it's auto starting. Is it is it when you download a file it auto starts? Oh no, um, I I'm the one that's recharging. I, I've got a. Uh, backpack that it's on the back of the phone. Yeah. So it's a uh, it's a battery. Good. Well, that'll help, right? That keeps it going. That's yeah. one thing you could do. Certainly, is get an external battery that'll keep it going. That's good. Right. And so, but what's this Barnes and Noble app again, that's that's launching automatically? I, that's what I'm curious about. You don't want that to launch because it uses battery uh, life. Right. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. When does it start? Keep, it's the Nook well, app. The thing is, when, when Barnes & Noble kicks in, it locks my phone so that I can't do anything. Oh. And the only way I can get back in my phone is to bring up the settings and get into applications and shut down the Barnes & Noble reader. <laughs> that's not good. And then, All I, right. can get, then so I can get access to my other app. That's a separate problem. That's a bad app. Uh, I would oh, okay. Yeah, I would try uninstalling it and reinstalling it. Um, okay. And make sure you have the latest version. Let me just look and see when they released the latest uh, version. Um, Do they put a date on here? May 24th. So... 
they certainly have updated it in the last couple of weeks. It may be because they had this problem. <laughs> they knew about it. Best way to uh -huh. fix this, in my opinion, uh, go into the apps in your settings. Stop the app. There'll be a, there's a, if you go look through your apps, you'll find the Barnes & Noble Nook app. You stop right. the app. Then you delete its cache and data, and then you uninstall the app. You want to get rid of all traces, including the books okay. you've downloaded. Now, this is a pain, I know, but part of the problem may be that you have a book that's corrupted. When it loads it up, it, go, it crashes. So you want to start with a fresh install of the app and new downloads of all the books, and then see if that fixes it. I bet you it will. Okay. Okay, I'll try that it's out. It's not supposed to do Thank what it's doing, much, Mark. You're welcome. It's, it, apps are not, never, to my knowledge, are they designed to crash on opening and lock up your phone and keep you from doing anything else. Unless, I mean, it's possible with a reader app, there's some setting that says, you know, stay in front all the time. I, yeah, like if you, if you, if you took a, a, a tablet from a Barnes & Noble and tried to make it your own, the, you know, they had Oh, that would be a problem, yes. Exactly. Yes. That's the only yeah. situation where I could see that. With Android, there, if you go in the system, it's actually a good kind of thing to know about. You go into the system settings, go to the apps. You'll see, as you scroll down, a list of all the apps. You can go into any individual app. You can f do a number of things, including clear the app's cache and data. In the case of this book, it, uh, Nook book app, it would delete the books. Uh, but the app might be fine after you do that, which would then say to you, that would tell. That would be the clue that there's a corrupt book in your in your list of books, and that's causing the uh, the crash. I bet you that's what it is. Um, Doug Spring Hill, Florida. Hello, Doug Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent, your tech guys. You got two of us today. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you, Leo. Uh, maybe maybe if I tell you what I'm trying to achieve, it might be easier. But, uh, Always the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. Say, here's what I want to do. How do I do it? Okay. So. Actually, what's not happening is uh, my soundbar is not always coming on. And I, I have a Vizio smart TV, and I shut the speakers off on it. And, uh, you know, I want the soundbar to turn on and have the surround speakers come on. And I don't know if I have a bad ARC uh, uh, port in the TV, and it's not always sending the signal to the soundbar. But I don't always get that little blue light that you're looking for. Uh, you know, the little white lights go up and down telling you that you know, something's going on. But when right. that blue light comes on, I know I'm going to get volume. And it's uh, very much of a hit and miss every time. And one thing sometimes that they – I called Vizio. They said, I'll press the power button and the Bluetooth button on the sound bar. Sometimes that works. Unplug the sound bar. Sometimes it works if I use the remote on the TV and shut the TV off and turn it back on. I, I just can't get it to work consistently. Vizio TV and Vizio soundbar, you'd think those would work. Uh, you're doing the right thing. You're connecting them via an HDMI cable from the TV's ARC port. That's the audio return channel. That mm -hmm. is, I, I've recently learned, I used to think that the digital connection, uh, the optical connection was the same as the ARC, but I've learned, in fact, ARC can do a lot more. So you always want to use, if you have it on your soundbar, ARC. Um, the soundbar... Uh, I'm surprised it's turning off at all. Are there, uh, I mean, there's no reason to turn off a sound bar. It's not using any juice unless there's something going to it or it's using a minimal amount of juice. So you're, are you turning the sound bar off? Uh, well, I don't think I am. <laughs> it's just not turning even, itself even off. There's also something in a TV, in TVs, and I don't remember what Vizio calls it, but the, the uh, industry term is CEC. And it is, this is a technology that is kind of hit or miss. When it works, it's great. The idea of CEC is that if you turn on one device in your video chain, all of the needed devices will also turn on. And similarly, uh, when you turn off a device, it will turn off all the devices. So look in your CEC menu on the Vizio. I don't, you know, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure how the Vizio soundbar Normally, you never turn off a soundbar, but maybe it's set up that when you turn off the TV, it turns off the soundbar, and you turn on the TV, it turns on the soundbar. In that case, it would be using CEC, so make sure CEC is turned on. Uh, in some TVs, you can say, use CEC to turn things on, but not to turn things off. If you have that setting, do that. Just turn off the part where it turns things off. Maybe just turns it on. You just want it to turn it on. You never want it to turn it off. Um, 
Make sure the TV's set properly to use the sound bar, not the TV's speakers. Um, I, I, I think it's probably going to come back down to this CEC thing. Um, and that's in the settings on the TV? It's on the TV. That's right. Does the sound bar itself have settings? Um, across the top of it, there's a you know a power button. A but but button. yeah, there's no app or Volume. anything like that. No. no. Mm. Okay. Yeah, this you know the some on some setups, uh, and maybe it makes sense because it's Vizio Vizio. Um, HDMI arc can turn off the soundbar using CEC when you're done. Saves a little power. So mm. you know maybe that's I'm. I, I'm one of those guys that goes around the house and turns off all the lights before I leave. <laughs> right. If you're that kind of guy, you don't want to leave the sound bar on. Um, so that's that's probably a setting in the in the TV. I would look at that and go specifically to look at the CEC stands for Consumer Electronics Control, and it's it's got a different name with every company. I don't know what Vizio calls their CEC. They, it looks like they call it CEC. They don't oh, give it a nice. special. Oh, Thank name. you, Vizio, for eliminating the confusion. So, uh, yeah, am I... Uh, so I should make sure that's on. Uh, yes, turn on CEC. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you, you might play with other settings, like things like turn power off when you turn off the TV and so forth. Do you want to turn on... You want the soundbar to come on when you turn on the TV, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't want to have to go through that every time, unplugging it, uh, turning the TV on and off. And yeah, that's no annoying. Come on. Yeah. This is, by the way, constant problem. I've been fighting with this with another television a sound bar in, a, in, in my, my wife's uh, uh, office, and it's just a constant problem. And eventually you'll figure it out. <laughs> this has to be on. That has to be off. This has to be in. This has to be out. And it'll all uh, it'll all work. <laughs> I some, I see Scooter X, uh, Mike, has given us a link to Vizio support my soundbar won't turn on but it does it have anything useful in there or is it just the usual um i actually found a different okay. uh, document that we'll include in the link uh a link in the show notes vizio soundbar hdmi arc not working here's seven different uh <laughs> things that you can try so okay. uh, oftentimes this does come down to troubleshooting because you never know exactly what it could be so uh techguylabs.com and look for the link, uh, the product analyst, and it has a whole bunch of different options that you can try. And if you're willing to commit to, you know, going through them, we'll f it'll help you figure out. The what other it is. thing that I would raise this issue because it's driving me nuts: HDMI cables. I have, has anybody else experienced this? Can get loose. The HDMI port can get loose, and the connection can be intermittent. And I have a real problem on my wife's TV because she's got a treadmill in there. She's got a you know bunch of things that jiggle Jostle, the floor. Yeah. I think that those that HDMI port has been kind of loosened, and so the TV will intermittently come off, the sound will intermittently come off, and I think it's because of a bad connection with HDMI. I just recently, yesterday, ordered six new HDMI cable from Cable Matters, uh, their, their best cables, mm -hmm. just to see if that's going to fix it. But I think that these holes also, the, the ports themselves, get bent or, or, or somehow widened. This is not an unusual problem, when, especially when you have... Uh, Type C has this problem too. Micro USB really had this problem. When you when you're plugging something in again and again and again, these ports start to get a little flaky. And so that's another possibility that your that the signal between your TV and that soundbar isn't always being seen by the soundbar. The blue light only comes on if you've got a good connection. Cables the first thing I try with yeah. troubleshooting. Cables are a nightmare. Uh, yeah, and 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 Dwindle's saying in our chat room, and I get this too. And it's very frustrating. TiVo or this TV or come up with a thing saying, I can't play this because HDCP, copy protection, oh. is not enabled. Yes, it is. You played it three minutes ago. It's enabled. And I think, again, this is a loose cable. Signal's got not getting through. I hate copy protection. 8888, ask Leo the phone number. 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. Micah Sargent, Leo Laporte. We agree on one thing. Cable Matters cables are the best, right? They're Indeed. good. Indeed. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Not a sponsor. But just, we like them. I, I, oh, thanks. Now we have a bunch of non functioning cables. John says when he got his new TV, he brought in his old cables to Twit and bought all new ones. So I just got in the, you know, Amazon yesterday six HDMI cables, and I'm going to go through her whole setup, replace all the old, because, you know, I just have a box of HDMI cables. Yeah, same. I'm going to replace those all with uh, 
brand new Cable Matters HDMI 2.1 cables. We'll see. I hope. It's driving me crazy. She says, let's get a new TV. I said, I don't want to buy a <laughs> new TV. Let's see the TV first. It's this nice, yeah. this is actually the, the Panasonic Viera Plasma. It's a nice TV. Uh, it does. It has four HDMI ports in, in ports. Yeah, but by now, they're all whopper jawed. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm convinced it's the that TV. Well, it's a pretty old TV, and I'm convinced it's the. I wonder if you can, if you could take the back off of it and re-tighten. There is a ports screw on HDMI ports you can tighten, but they're as tight as it can be. I think I'm going to get some Gorilla Glue. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to get some Gorilla Glue. You can't, I don't want to put glue in the port because right. you don't want to block the contact. So. Get the thing in there, get it in really good, get a good signal, and then Gorilla Glue around the edge, maybe. Or I don't you could know. get some of those little uh, plastic ties that you that have a sticky on it. You stick it to the back of the TV, you put the cable through and tighten and it, it, tighten it, tighten down. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, strain relief, exactly. Yeah. I, I honestly think it's the ports. Jiggle relief. And what I have done, and I'm ashamed to admit, is take a screwdriver and bend the metal on the HDMI ports in to make a tight connection. But I don't, oh, I, don't I know see. If that's working. This episode of the Tech Guy brought to you by Cashfly, quite literally brought to you by Cashfly. We've been using them for over 10 years. When you download an episode, when your podcast application gets an episode, it's getting it from a server close to you on the Cashfly network. They're our content delivery network, and they are amazing. 50 locations around the globe guarantees our content gets to you as fast as possible, 10 times faster than the old methods we were using. It's on six continents, so everybody can get it faster. 30% faster than other major CDNs, a 98% cash hit ratio, and 100% availability in the past 12 months. In fact, I can say this. We have never had a problem in more than a decade of using Cashfly. Uh, Cashfly has just been a boon to us. Now Cashfly is introducing, I love this, ultra-low latency video streaming. Now, we're not talking the unreliable WebRTC solution you might have seen before. This is WebSocket Live Video, scales to millions. It's incredible. And you can go live in hours, not days. And the latency, sub one second latency. That's pretty amazing. So go to Cashfly. Ask them about the ultra low latency video streaming. While you're there, ask them about SOS. We've been using this for some time. The storage optimization system that reduces bandwidth, increases your cache hit ratio to 100%, takes a load off your origin servers, your S3 bills go down. Uh, we put all our content on Cashfly so there's no transit from our origin servers to Cashfly, where we do it once, and then from then on, it's fast, it's easy. They also have fully managed CDN solutions for people who don't want to be worried about any of this stuff. With their elite managed packages, you'll get VIP treatment, 24-7 support, response time in less than an hour. Cashfly, lightning fast gaming, faster downloads, zero lag, zero glitches or outages, mobile content optimization that offers Automatic and simple image optimization so your site loads faster on any device. Ultra low latency video streaming, sub one second latency to more than a million concurrent users. Multiple CDNs, 50 plus all over the globe for redundancy and failover. I mean, you just can't get better than Cashfly. Try Cashfly right now. And they're 24-7, 365 priority support. They're always there when you need them. They've been there for us for a decade, and I think you'll love them. Go to Cashfly. Dot com. You've heard me say it before. C A C H E F L Y dot com. Thank you, Cashfly. Is this one of your young people's songs? I don't recognize this. No, this, this is one. more my this is more my my generation. I could tell by the guitar. Dun 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 Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent, your tech guys, 8888 Ask Leo. Dick D. Bartolo, Mads Maddest writer, is coming up. But first, Tom on the line. From Ventura, home of the new Mac OS. Hi, Tom. <laughs> hey, Leo. How are you? I am great. How are you? Um, good, good. Uh, I've, I've got a question. This is timely. I was listening to the show, and I'm in a bit of a uh, quandary. I switched over from an old Mac 9, uh, two, 2011, which I had on an SSD drive, and it was great, except I can't you know, upgrade a lot of things. 
I'm switching it over to a 2017, which has the old HHD drive or whatever they call them, HDD drive. And I want to use a SSD portable as my primary startup drive. Do you have any issues with doing that? I no, not at all. Uh, uh, in fact, it should be faster. Does that, the 2017 probably has Thunderbolt 2 on it, I'm thinking? What is the... It does. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think it does. So yeah. that's not yeah. that's not as fast as Thunderbolt 3 or, or Thunderbolt 4, but uh, probably as fast as a spinning drive, an HDD. Yeah, at the very least, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and a Mac will boot from that external drive without any issue. You know, there's a I think they still include this disc called this uh, control panel called startup disc, where you can actually say this is the disc I want to boot from, or you can just hold down the option key when you're booting up and choose the from the bootable drives available to you. Uh, but absolutely, you can do that. In fact, it's one of the reasons I uh, recommend and use a, a backup program uh, for Macs called Super Duper, because with Super oh, yeah. if you have an internal drive, you can use Super Duper to create an external bootable external drive and keep it up to date, so that if the internal drive dies instead of panicking uh or shutting down and going to the shop you can just re reboot and start from the external drive and because you've been using super yeah. duper to keep it up to date it's exactly the same so yeah it's thunderbolt about, thunderbolt to get the fastest connection you can obviously sure yeah well that's the one i'll do at uh fan disc has uh yeah. As a new Gen 2 blah, blah. Perfect. So Perfect. I use one of those. Now, now, what do I do with the internal? Can I uh, use that as a backup? Or sure. I mean, it still works. Is the issue just that it's too slow? It's extremely slow. <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. I, 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 I can't believe Apple can put on a product like that. Was it extremely it's slow a, when you bought it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> four minutes to boot the damn thing. Oh, no, no, no. Four, so here's the thing. Get Super Duper, make that external drive, copy it over. It's going to take a while. And then wipe the internal drive. There's something wrong with it. Uh, it, it. It could be just reformatting it and and redoing it might fix that. So, you know, what happens with hard drives, especially <laughs> spinning hard drives, if they get hard, if a sector gets hard to read, the, the operating system will try many times. If you have a swath of sectors in an important part of the drive, like the boot area, the operating system might try three times, four times to read each sector and then go to the next one, then try three or four times, then go to the next one. That, that's why it takes four minutes. Sometimes formatting the drive is sufficient. Okay. Well, so, so, But I, yeah, boot yeah, to the external. So. Don't suffer. No more suffering, Tom. Great. Thanks, Leo. You're welcome. Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent, your tech guys. Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent, your bad boys, tech guys. <laughs> 88, 88, ask Leo Dicti Bartolo, Mads, maddest writer coming up. Brian is on the way on the line from Richmond, VA. Hello, Brian. Hello, Leah and Micah. How are you, gentlemen? Uh, we are well. How are you, well. sir? I'm good. I'm listening in Richmond, Virginia on the great 50,000 watt WRVA, great station. Awesome. Thank you, WRVA. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Hey, listen, um, I also, uh, I do a radio show uh, on a college station here in town on the side. Nice. Um, and I'm trying to record the show on my iPad. There was a website that I could use, but somehow uh, the station lost connection with that website to record it. And I'm now trying to do it in the radio studio on the iPad, and I don't know if, how I need to do it. I bought one of these Apple connectors today. Uh, I bought a lightning, the headphone jack, um, and I wanted to know if that could be possible. No, unfortunately, it's going the other way. So it's lightning out, not lightning in. Uh, gotcha, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Okay. Does the station stream? They do, and we used to, I used to, like I said, I used to be able to record the stream on a website, but... They change the yeah. link, and I'm unable to do that. A anymore. lot of streaming, unfortunately, and it's just kind of up to the streamer, uh, does not let you theoretically record. That you know, that's kind of oh, okay. their idea. Mike is our iOS expert. I'm going to throw this in his lap. Honestly, I think the simplest way is just to use the built-in screen recording feature on an iPad. You're going to get a large file 
uh, but it's going to have the audio that you have from the, uh, the stream. stream that you're doing. Yeah. So it's what we call the analog hole. You're taking advantage of the fact that, you know, even if there's no support for downloading the stream, because that's the funny thing. When you're playing back a stream, you're downloading it. Mm -hmm. The only the only difference right. between between listening to a stream and downloading a stream is that those packets are played and then discarded uh, and instead of saved to the hard drive. Or in the case of the iPad, the SSD. So, um, yeah, just a, I didn't even think of that. Sure, a screen recording. You're going to get video along with the audio, but at least you'll get it. Yep. And then if you want to afterwards, you can just save uh, the, you can export the audio separate from the yeah. video. Uh, this is an example one. where the iPad isn't quite yet a desktop computer, mm -hmm. right? Uh, <laughs> some of the things you expect well, you know, to do. The radio station I'm at is so cheap that uh, there's no Adobe uh, Audition in the studio, which would normally be my. That's my what you use. Choice, yeah. So yeah, if you so if you can get so the other you've got obviously output from the board. That's why you were hoping you could maybe put it in the headphone jack, but unfortunately, it's a one-way street. It doesn't record. Um, but there are, I believe, ways to. I don't know if it's an Apple adapter. So what you'd need is a Lightning adapter that would take audio in. Mm -hmm. USB audio would work, right? So if you had a device. The, an analog to digital converter that would convert the... Is that the only way you've got the audio from your radio show is, is, is like a headphone is audio? Analog yeah, audio? Yeah, they're in the studio, yeah. yeah. So there yeah, should... If you've, got, if you've got audio, essentially, then uh, if wouldn't use an iPad for this, but just any kind of recorder would work in this situation, yeah. right? So like a Zoom, yeah, a Zoom recorder, recorder would work. You don't have to put it on the iPad. Than that. Yeah. A cassette deck, even. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when I in my day, back when I was in college radio, we had a big reel to reel in the back Absolutely, of the studio. Sure. Yeah, and it was it, we called it a skimmer because it would only go on when you turn the microphone on, and as soon as you turn the microphone off, it would yeah. stop so you didn't get the songs in the air check. So, uh, these. so in my in my real life, I actually work at WRVA. Oh, and, nice! Uh, I, I'm the I'm the traffic director, and I've been in the radio business for 35 years. So I remember all those. You remember reels those? Thank you. You remember that? Yeah, the skimmers. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's also a logger that's running. I don't know if stations still do this. They certainly don't do it on a reel-to-reel, -reel, but we had a really slow tape deck. <laughs> it would go three and a half yeah. inches per, per second or something like that, and it would record uh, everything for uh, FCC and legal purposes. Uh, but yeah, I think those days are all they're all replaced by digital uh, digital means now. Well, I'm gonna try to use the uh, I'm gonna try to utilize the screen recorder. Is that something I have to download on the iPad? Or? No, it's built in. Yeah, built right in. And I've got a link in the show notes, uh, techguylabs.com, that has the Apple support document that shows you everything you need to know to be able to use. It's that. just well, if you just pull down from the right hand corner. Uh, that's your control panel. And you, what is it called? The control center. Control center. You can add, you know, if you go in the set, hit the control panel and edit. <laughs> i got to get all this terminology right. If you go into, what do they call it on the settings, in, in right? The settings app, you go to the control center, then you, you can see add an option to add different The sound settings. recorder or the screen recorder. And then yeah. that way you'll have a button in the control center. So it's very simple. You swipe down from the right, press the button you're recording. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I really enjoy your your guys. What's uh, the uh, every week? What's the, the team version two? What's the team mascot for uh, this college? Uh, so it's the uh, Richmond Spiders, actually. Oh my God! <laughs> oh yeah, <no. laughs> I'm not messing with those guys. Holy! You cow. need about uh, you need about five or six different uh, mortgages on your house to afford to go there. <laughs> the Richmond <laughs> which is about eighty grand a year. <gasps> what? Oh, oh yeah, my God! It's, it's yeah. I'm not a student. Only work on the. It's a student station, but really. Over the years, it's kind of evolved into more of a community station. And nice. these guys have been doing radio shows over there for 40 years. Honestly, so. that's what college radio should be. My, my college station in my youth back in the 70s was also uh, community driven. And that way, the students get access to real people. Uh, I think it's a great idea. So, um, yeah, good. Good for you. The Richmond Spiders, University of Richmond. Uh, go yeah, Spiders. Yeah. <laughs> I don't talk. <laughs> I do a dance. I'm an old man, but I do a dance music show, current dance music. So it's uh, oh, nice, fun. No sports talk. I'm you you know all. You know all the stuff that Micah likes. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate it, Brian. It's nice to talk to you. Good to talk to you, gentlemen. All right, go spiders. And when I say go spiders, I mean go. Get the heck out of here, <laughs> Scott. On the line from Los Angeles. Hi, Scott. 
Hey, uh, hi, Leo. Um, I, uh, I've always been a PC guy, but I discovered LiDAR, and so I got an iPad Pro. And I used to be able to, like a year ago, do snap drop to transfer files from anything into uh, or out of my iPad into my PC. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. It doesn't work anymore. Oh, Pardon? that's cool. I didn't know about SnapDrop. So it was like AirDrop, but it was for uh, for Windows. Windows, Android, anything. You Linux, know, et cetera. Oh. Yeah. I've got a replacement yeah. for you, Scott. I didn't even heard of it, and it's gone already. Uh, there's okay. an open source app called Lan Drop, L A N Drop, and it is L -A -N -Drop? yes, L A N Drop, and it's available for Linux, it's available for Android, it's available for iOS, it's available for iPad, oh, Mac OS, etc. And it lets you do that exact same thing. It uses the local area to let you drop files between those different devices. Oh, fantastic! It's I've been I've had to resort to. Uh, Sneaker uh, net, drive. yeah, USB key <laughs> transit, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna. I had no idea because I, I like you. I use a variety of operating systems. You are you. You say you're in the film industry. Yeah, so I I'm a uh, production designer, art director. Oh, neat. And with the with the uh, lidar, where it would normally take me or take two people to measure out a home. Uh, you do it in LiDAR, take it back, and you pull measurements wow. off that. Wow. And put it into SketchUp and then to Unreal. And, uh, you know, it just keeps so they, going. And you even have a 3D layout. You can, you know, exactly what you've got to work with. And that's really cool. Well, I think we've yeah. talked before, right, Scott? Yeah. I, I, I was, <laughs> I've been listening or watching you since uh, the TV days. <laughs> what are you working on th this week? This week is a, a Disney show. Fun. Uh, it's uh, called uh, Launchpad. Oh, neat. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. That's exciting. And did you work on Westworld? I worked briefly on Westworld. I guess that's then, uh, uh, premiering soon. got deleted. <laughs> oh. Well, Westworld needs art direction like any other world. It's good, yep. to, good to talk to you, Scott. Landrop.app. Hey, it's great to talk to you. Call back again anytime. Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent, the tech guys. Yeah, he, Scott's cool. Scott gets Scott works on some cool stuff. That's super neat. Yeah, Launchpad, huh? Is that is that? Uh, wonder when that's coming out. So, um, I don't know when they're gonna put that back out. So, I don't know. We're just in the middle of just start tomorrow or Monday. We start filming day one. Nice. And what are the COVID uh, uh, protocols like nowadays? Are they better or easier? Or? No, it's about the, they pretty much, if you're in what's called zone A, which you're next to the uh, actors, and um, then you get you get tested twice a week, and then if you're in zone B, which I'm in, I don't like to get around actors. I don't need to be around them. I just need to be around the set. Yeah. It's once a week you get tested. Okay. That's not so, so bad. Yeah. No, it's just, it, it is a pain in the butt because you got to, you know, you get your... Oh, so little time, and you got to wait around right. for the test to come back before right. you can go on to work. Right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and you will see people go get their test, and they'll boogie on in anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool, man. I'm cool. Well, yeah. I just think what you do, I just, we talked about this last time, it's just really neat. Art direction is so little appreciated and yet so important to any film or TV show. It's just really a big yeah. deal. Yeah. And I'm a little pissed. They, uh, they took uh, the art director or production designer uh, Oscar off the television now. Oh. Uh, I know. <laughs> oh, you get this one of those where they do it earlier and then you get a little quick mention in the award show? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. They blew it this year. They really blew it. I, I, I did not no. like that, the way they did that. I thought that was disappointing. And, yeah, no, you, art direction deserves an Oscar. That's a big deal. That's the, Yeah, well, we get one, but we just don't get it. Yeah, no, but they, they need to credit the crafts. I really think so. I think that's so important. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because yeah. without it, what do you got? You got a you couple know? of dope standing on an empty stage. That's what you got. <laughs> Yeah, you got a couple of actors slapping each other. Yeah, <laughs> I just saw the uh, Nick, the new Nick Cage movie, which is a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek uh, mocking of actors, and I thought it was very, 
very funny. I, I really enjoyed I'll it. Watch that. Yeah, the unbearable weight of massive talent. <laughs> oh. <Okay. laughs> I mean, it's a little broad. At first, I thought it was going to be, you know, kind of uh, sl a sly parody of Nick Cage, and it is, but it's also kind of ends up being a Nick Cage movie. <laughs> Uh, he's a character in himself. Yeah. Oh, I I bet. I can imagine. Yeah, he is. <laughs> but he's made so many great movies and then squandered it all, which is so sad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's uh, that's when they get bit, really big in their head and yep. they think it's going to always last. Yep. And suddenly the phone's not ringing as much. I mean. Yep. That's kind of part of the premise of this. He agree. He's so he's broke. So he agrees to take a million dollars to to be a guest at some billionaire's birthday party, <laughs> <laughs> which is pretty that, hysterical. <laughs> that does happen. Of course it does. Of course it uh, does. The B, the B actors are taking anything they can anything get. Anything they know? get. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll talk to you again soon, Scott. Stay well. Very good. Keep Thank working. You for the tip. Okay. Thank Micah. Yeah. No problem. I wish I could do that. Can you? You can do that, Micah, right? What? <laughs> Dick, can you do that? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I bet he used to. That's it's sad. Disco Dick B. Dart Hobo. <laughs> no, wait a minute. That's the one. Oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> Mad Magazine's maddest writer and our gizmo wizard. We call him the Giz Wiz. Hello, Dickie D. Leo, how you doing, pal? I am great. How are you? Uh, I am good, too. And you can put your wallet away because I'm doing an all uh, scam spot. Ooh. Okay. It's, it's all don't buy this. Yeah. Well, the first, Leo, is the most involved scam uh, I've ever heard of. Okay. So I get a call. Uh, this is Spectrum. We're looking for Richard D. Bartolo, that's, who's the account holder. That's your ISP, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. So I said, yes, this is Richard D. Bartolo. And he said, okay, uh, you have three cable boxes and they have to be replaced. I said, okay. Was that right, um, that you have three? Yes, yes. Okay, interesting. Good uh, guess. Uh, okay, yeah, good guess. So I said, uh, you know, I hate to lose the shows I'm on. And he said, well, I have good news. Because he said, hang on, let me just talk to the tech guy. Like they put me on another guy. And he said, yeah, with the new boxes, you can tell the technician to, before he leaves, to Save them. get the info off yeah. the old box yeah. to the new box. Yeah. And he said, also, your new box can record six shows at once, Ooh. which I know Spectrum has, but I don't have. And it has twice the memory. And I said, oh, this is great. And, and I'm thinking, this has got to be a scam. And I said, and you this is going to cost... This didn't sound like much? a scam, actually. I mean, it no, sounds it totally didn't. legit. Yeah. I said, and... How much is this going to cost? And yeah. they said, well, no, you're a Spectrum customer, so it's, there's no charge. Huh. And I'm trying to trap them. And I said, and when is this going to happen? And they give me another lady who says, the earliest we can be in your neighborhood, doesn't mention what neighborhood, is between 3 and 6, uh, six on Tuesday. I said, okay. I'm still thinking, what? And then... Um, it comes. He said, okay, everything, I said, this is great. So you guys, uh, I'm happy, but wait, wait one minute. There is a simple $5 setup charge to do all this. Put it on my bill. And that's exactly what I said. And they said, unfortunately, we are, we're not in a position to put on your bill. We must have a credit card. Wow, that's a long way to go to get your credit card number. <laughs> Holy, yes. Holy cow. They had three yes. different people. Holy cow. Yes. Yes. Except one of them had a, a very heavy Indian accent. Mm. And I said, uh, ma'am, may I know your name? And she said, yes, I'm Beverly. They always are. <laughs> they always are. So, uh, you know, what I'm thinking, though, is there is some culpability for Spectrum. They must be selling their Co customer list. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe. It but I mean, be. I immediately called Spectrum and I said, we are replacing boxes. He said, but uh, we do them a, a block at a time. And he said, just tell me the, the phone number on the account. And I gave it to him and he said, oh, the last time 
a real person from Spectrum called you was January 2020. Wow. So he said, if anybody really called you, it instantly is put into your record that someone from I Spectrum bet you that takes in a lot of people. They really went the extra oh, mile. Oh, well, you know what? I'm, I'm looking for a scam and not finding it because right. they have answers to stuff. Right. Um, oh, and I also said to the Spectrum guy, I said, you know, if I get a new box, I can transfer old stuff off. He said, not any of the boxes we have. So that part they made up. But wow. elaborate, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So watch out for that one, kids. But uh, yeah, yeah in exactly. general, and uh, you know, I mean, I think people listen to this show probably are wise enough not to fall for it. But tell your friends and family too. You know, let them know. Yeah. Let them know that it, that it can sound really official. Yeah. Never give your the, credit card over the and phone. And they need yeah. and they make it five dollars. I think because you go, oh, all I'll lose is five dollars if it. Yeah, yeah. But they'll have your credit card yeah, number. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so that's part one. The second is the five nuclear explosion LED flashlight. <laughs> That can produce up to 100,000 lumens. What? Shine it on a playground up to 3,080 feet away. <laughs> so I went, I went, I bought one. Why is it a playground specifically? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But what I loved about it is I thought, wait a minute. I have Leo Laporte's personal playground where at three or five... You went into Riverside Park. Yes. So I, I, I and I put a video over on. It doesn't even get as far as the path into the park. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, if that and flashlight were real, I don't think it'd be legal. Yeah, you could that's blind too much. People. Like the brightest it, it flashlight would, is half of that. Yeah. Yeah, and it would be burning hot, right? Yeah. Because because of the lumens produced. Because you and I, Leo, we did a thing. It was called witch the witch something and at a press conference the guy fried an egg on it <laughs> and he let me hold it he said uh, you can turn it on he said just quickly put your hand up near the top and you'll take it away quickly because this will heat up incredibly fast uh, anyway it, it's on Amazon it's on AliExpress so beware of the five, and I love the name, the five nuclear explosion LED rechargeable flashlight. How much is it? Uh, uh, I paid, I, I bought mine in AliExpress. It was 17 bucks. So <laughs> at least it was About, only 17 bucks. Yes, I know. I, I mean, know. if it really it were five much. nuclear explosions, I'd pay at least 100 bucks for that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow, and on and on Amazon, it's like uh, twenty four bucks or something. Oh, wow. uh, it looks like someone in the chat room found it for like two bucks. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> maybe two bucks. It might be. That's worth what it's it. worth. But, yeah, it is yeah. not five nuclear explosions. It's not no, even no. one nuclear explosion. No, I said I've seen the light, <laughs> and I don't like how much light it is. <laughs> the place to go to see the light is gizwiz.biz. That's Dick's website. G i z w i z dot b i z. That's where you can see all the things Dick mentions on the show. Including links to these scams. <laughs> just well, just the link to the flash. I guess you, you can't really call Spectrum and say, could you scam me, please? Uh, <laughs> I'd like to get that scam right. call. How do I arrange for that? Uh, go go to the website, G-I-Z-W-I-Z -I -I dot B-I-Z, and there's a button that says the Gizwiz visits the tech guy. You might note other buttons like the Gizwiz visits World News Now on ABC. He's got great gadgets there. Uh, he also has the What the Heck Is It contest, a chance to win an autograph copy of Mad Magazine. I got the new one. Boy, you are organized. I I'll am tell so you. with it. Uh, this has uh, Alfred E. Newman uh, as a squirrel in a tree, and he's collected all the nuts, except that they're the kind of nuts that screw into <laughs> bolts. They're not <laughs> acorn nuts. And yeah. he's uh, smiling. They'll never spoil. And it's, the squirrels are a mad. a little bit of cleverness. <laughs> it's very cute. Yeah, I, yeah. So you're playing for this. You get an autograph. This is the August uh, issue of Mad Goes Nutty Over Greed. Uh, if you get it, there are six autographed Mad magazines for the right answer. Uh, and if there's more than six right answers, there'll be a drawing. 
And there's 12 Autograph Mad magazines for the cleverest wrong answer. Again, judges' decisions are... Do you do a drawing or do you decide which are cleverest? Uh, Dennis and I decide. Oh, judges' but decisions. We, but, we, we, but we do a drawing when we get more than... Uh, there are a lot the of clever answer. ones. You don't yeah. have to decide. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So uh, all of that's at gizwiz.biz. And actually, uh, we're getting close to the end of June. So this oh, is... Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, a couple it's more flying. weeks. It's yeah. flying. It's flying. Summer's almost here, Dickie D. <laughs> is the weather nice at Disney at Disneyland uh, today? Uh, today, it's only 69. Oh. But the well, last nice. couple of days have been nice. Yeah. You're wearing the Hawaiian shirt, so I know it must be Yeah, I was I'm getting big. ready. Yeah, yeah, You said you liked it, so you're going to see it a lot. Thank you, Dick <laughs> D. Bartolo. Thank okay, you, Micah buddy. Sargent. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I can't believe we're out of time. We'll see you next time. Have a great Geek Week. Bye-bye. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy Show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, TWIT, T-W-I-T. It stands for This Week in Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security and Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And, of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon, This Week in Tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guys show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.